welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, I am very excited to have my good friend Avron Laguna. What's up, bro? Oh, dude. Ch- chilling, honestly. I mean, what else, you know? What yeah, are what we, are we going to do? What are we doing? Reality, yeah. yeah, the end of the world stopping everything. Yeah. No, I'm doing good, man. I'm well, doing that's good. good. Yeah, everybody's taking care of themselves, you know, and it's like, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, we have only so many choices right now, so. Yeah. Yeah, so what's up, man? Uh, not much, man. Not much. Just nice uh, podcast thing you got here, man. Really thank cool. you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yeah, fucking, uh, no, I've just been, uh, I've been doing the same thing, just taking care of myself, uh, looking after the fucking podcast, making sure things are going down fucking well. Um, getting ready to go out and do some new, new filming stuff soon, too. Oh, nice. Which is going to be fun. We're going to add some uh, auxiliary uh, videos to the YouTube channel, so that's going to be tight. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a, this isn't about me, man. This is about my guests. <laughs> How about we talk about some green jelly stories, man? Oh, like yeah. first off, <laughs> uh, like uh, you want to explain to the people why uh, they're called green jelly instead of green jello? Well, when they started making money and stuff, uh, when Three Little Pigs hit, Green Jello says, oh, no, 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 you're not going to do that. So they made a big old stink about it and pretty much put the band on hiatus in a way to do, you know, to, to do all the legal parts. So they had to take care of that. And plus there were other parts involved that, you know, that other people were in, I don't know, you know, like General Foods, uh, uh, the Green Jello people and all these other people, you know, Snap, Crackle, Pop, Rice Krispies, you know, they were all mad and stuff. So we had to redo it. We had to re-release it. And it was just kind of like bummed out. And at the same time, though, the members of Green Jello at the time uh, happened to be uh, members of Tool. And when I was seeing them in high school, I was like, oh, these guys are badass. And Danny carries on drums. Well, what do you think? You know what I mean? Like, that's all. Like, yeah, you know, I was seeing them in Hollywood. And, uh, and other guys were in it, too. And then, they, and then we saw, and then I saw Tool. But the thing is that he also got Tool, their, their record label, their deal too at the same time you know what i mean so there's there that's a delicate situation but they went off and did their thing and green jello was still that we still did you know he was still doing his own stuff with other other projects he had and then uh skipping skipping i ended up moving to vegas you know because after you know I me mean, when i worked for the record label i was like what the hell was that what am i gonna do after you because it was after 9 11 yeah right 9 11 was in 2000 2000 right or 9 well, 2001 2001 right yeah 2001 right Shit, who knows anymore? Yeah, I'm like, geez, that happened. That, it that, didn't even that, happen, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's it like almost that far. But that's when the record label said, no, 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 we're all gonna go digital now, and all this. Everybody went back, and I was out of a, out of work again. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what am I gonna do? So I moved to Vegas. So skipping, skipping, I ended up seeing Green Jello again, you know. And it was like, and they weren't, they were all right, you know. It wasn't the same experience that I saw last time, you know, when I saw them in Hollywood. Like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, you know, so. um I talked to him and I let him know that I, was, I had always played the songs religiously, you know what I mean? Like, I had always played the songs, you know, I know him, you know, he's like, really? He was like, yeah, he's like, I'll bring your stuff next time. And I said, all righty, righty. And uh, so, so one day I had a, a gig, not too long after that, I think they played at, uh, I forget what bar they played at. I didn't, I, I didn't dig on it, but it was, it was, it was what it was. And um, then I had a gig with this, uh, with this cover band we were doing, uh, the Copycats, right? They do do like Santana and a bunch of like old jams, you know, a bunch of like like old westerns, right? And um, La Bamba, and uh, <laughs> so so uh, so that was on Saturday, and I was going to LA on Thursday with my rig, and I have a rig in California too. And uh, he was like, he throws up this gig that hey, I'm gonna have a gig in. Uh, in Hollywood on Friday at the House of Blues Foundation Room. I was like, and I posted, hey, I'm on my way with my equipment. I have another gig on Saturday. He's like, well, hey, thumbs up, come down, you know? So I called my boy Dino, because I you know, I know the guys from you know, Fear Factory and Static and all that stuff. I grew up with those guys. And uh, they actually helped me out in the industry when I was there, you know what I mean? So so skipping, skipping, he uh, he says, yeah, we'll be in Hollywood that day too. Come come over to Jen's friend's party at the, whisk, at the, at the uh, House of Blues. You know, and I was like, are you, 
that's at what at the, at the foundation room and he's all yeah and i was all that's the gig i'm playing and he sends me the flyer and sure as shit it says green jello right there and it says the justice howard uh book release party for a revelation so it's all the girls and all the people that did tattoos in hollywood and all this stuff all the photos that she did and she was part of green jello so when releasing all that with the the weekly and all that stuff so i played that gig and i was playing for the people that i work for on tours and stuff i was playing for the people their movie stars and stuff, you know, the dog, Bounty Hunter was there, the guy from that, what was that one? Uh, the, the the butterfly, you know what I mean? Uh, crazy the, Town. Yeah, Crazy Town. Those oh. guys were there because they got all those tats, right? But they were part of her, <laughs> her the releases. Worst. It totally, dude. But it was like, you know, there were all kinds of people there that were like, like big stars, dude. I was like, I was amazed, you know, like, what the hell? I'm over here playing these gigs. I was at OzFest, yeah. fucking whatever one that right, Crazy right. Town was oh, at in California, was, yeah, oh God, and they so booed like, them oh. off the oh, stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was the worst. It, well, it was hilarious yeah. for me, but, I mean, it had to be terrible for them. Yeah, but, I, yeah, yeah, actually watching them get booed off the stage by that huge amphitheater. Yeah, but it's really fun, but, yeah, you know what I mean? So you. now, so we've been playing, you know what I mean? He was, he was, he did dug on me doing guitar, so I've been, you know, like a core part of a lot of stuff that he does on the west coast you know when i'm able to do it you know besides you know what we're like you and i do is production so it's like all these other gigs you don't know what's going on you gotta you know vamp up the money get the stuff going you i gotta get merch you know what i mean so i gotta make my money while i'm there you know tra -tra -tra -tra, you know, all this stuff right so <laughs> so we just finished coming back from sweden you know what i mean we did the sweden rock fest we did the malmo fest we opened for kids we were like kids easy top def ah. leopard 70 bands and we walked in when the day we walked in which was the second day because we missed the first day unfortunately but it was rain. It was like a lot of raining out. And when uh, we were going, it, like the rain stopped. We were like, yes. Oh, every, and it was back on, you know. So then we went down there, and that was the day that, um, that was the second day. But the day we did was rainbow. The day before that was like, like uh, was, uh, what do you call it, a uh, kiss. And the days before that was like ZZ Top and Def Leppard and Slayer. Was Slayer and Tenacious D were happening when we went. So when it was up, if Slayer was on, it was all like, oh, shit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. To, yeah, but we had to go check in. We had to do all that stuff. So by that time, we finally made it. Nobody was on the big metal stage, and we saw Tenacious D coming out. So we ran over there. Yes. And hey, you know, a lot of the members, there was like 12 of us. You know what I mean? We had drummers. We had, we had guitar players. We had bass players. We had you know, all these people from around the world, from all well, around the country in Sweden. A lot of us hadn't even played yet before together. A lot of us hadn't even met. <laughs> we never even met before. And we're in a band together in Sweden. That's fantastic. Opening for Kiss and opening for for Def Leppard. And you know what I mean? Like just chilling. Dude, like, oh, God. Hey, so we were all there in the group. I was like, come on, guys. Then we go talk to the security. So, yeah, so we talk to <laughs> Come on backstage. You know, we were all backstage, got up on stage. You know, we were in the back right there watching Tenacious D when they were on. I have some pictures that it was like there, you know, we we're kicking back back there. And when when uh, when they were off, you know, because we were kicking back backstage, you know, like backstage in the, the field. There's like a little field. And it was like a huge field. It was, it was amazing. You know, the Sweden Rock Fest, 70,000 people. Jeez. 70,000 people, you know what I mean? Like, it was amazing, dude. And I got to play that. I feel so blessed with doing that, dude, you know what I mean? And we were doing more. So right in the half of that, halfway point of that show, we got asked to do the Malmo Fest in August. And the Malmo Fest is, like, down south of Sweden. So we were, like, in the, like, the three quarters up and, like, down south by Copenhagen, you know, it was down there. So oh, it was amazing. They are like, hey, we're going to go. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, shit, man, I got to get my ass working. I got to get some stuff going. And that's, like, when, when that happened, that's when I literally got my shit together. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I can't do nothing. I can't, I can't, I'm not gambling. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing nothing. I would just focus, focus, had to get it done. And I was all like, dude, I'm going to, I knew already that I'm going to kick myself in the ass if I don't do this. And I asked him and I asked him a couple of times, I go, Hey, you let me know what's going on with, with Sweden. He's all, I'll let you know. And I said, okay. And this is like in March. And I was like, shit, man, Sweden's in like June, you know, like, okay, man, you know what I mean? So the other people that, that he was waiting on, that were crying about it. They didn't come through passports tickets money whatever it was they weren't able so i was all like boom i'm in you know what i mean we talked about it you know we like, let's do this boom i went out man it was nuts it was nuts it was crazy but i was able to to take care of stuff you know what i mean like see the way that was gonna go and i was like because i'd never been out of the out of this country like that yeah not to mention on a tour and good thing that we work in production and I know that shit because otherwise I would have been like, oh, I would have been lost, you know, because I wouldn't know what, what the hell was going on, you know what I mean? And it would have been bad for the band because they wouldn't have had like, you know, like someone that was knowing what was going on, how much time we needed, what we needed to do, who we needed to talk to, who we needed to plug in, who needed to hear themselves, you know, where we were at, who to talk to, who was in charge of it. It was like, we were just like down, you know what I mean? And, and actually, I think one of the members was able to get a recorded version of that mix. 
So we have a live mix, and we have some mixes that are on YouTube from Green Jello Suite. And so there's like three or four songs in a row. Oh, it's nice. been great, you know what I mean? And we we're talking about stuff. We were talking about Tool and how all that stuff happened. And, and he's like, yeah, dude, you know what I mean? Their first gig at, at the Green Jello Loft, you know what I mean? They played there, and there was a guy there... <clears throat> Tom Morello was friends, was uh, roommates with with the guys from Liquid Jesus. Liquid Jesus was another band that I had originally seen, and then I heard about Green Jello, and then I saw Green Jello, and I was like, oh, hell yeah, and then I saw Tool, like, holy shit. But at that time, this other band called uh, Lock Up was going on, uh, was with, with, um, with Tom Morello, and it wasn't doing too well or whatever, you know, whatever was was going on. You know, what I mean, they were they had other other plans, and he saw Tool, and I was like, ha ha, I need to get an angry singer. <laughs> Until Zach De La Rocha, Rage Against the Machine is born. You know what I mean? Like, but that day when That's they so saw, dead. pretty much when he saw when he saw Tool play their first gig in front of Green Jello. You know what I mean? It's that it's a picture of of yeah. the original Tool with Green Jello in the back the backdrop right there because they were opening for Green Jello because then they were all gonna get together and all mask up and be Green Jello after that. You know what I mean? That's like, crazy. You know, that was I didn't crazy. know that. That was the thing. See, like when I saw them, it was like two bands and then Green Jello, right? And so the one band, I think it was Haunted Garage and someone else, right? And so it was like, I walked in the palace and I saw Danny Carey's set right there. It was like the, the two sonar sets, the way he does his symbols. I was like, Danny Carey's here, awesome. It's gonna be a badass show, I knew it, you know what I mean? So, but there were two other risers, one was low and one was mid. So the, original, the, the first band, which was Tool, played on the first thing. And then after it was like another band. And then at the end, it was all of them doing Green Jello. All the bands, all three bands. Like, it was like all the guitar players and all the bass players. It was like ridiculous. It was ridiculous. You know what I mean? So I was like, I like that. I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and then that's how I just got in touch with them. And now I play there. You know what I mean? So now we're, that's you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. So, so next year, we have stuff already lined up for April. Oh really? Yeah, it's Out already here in happening. Vegas? Yeah, no, well, not no. yet in Vegas. We're gonna see how it goes. We do have a record coming out on Cleopatra Universal, oh. which is um, which is coming out soon. And we have members of uh, Suicidal, members of uh, Fishbone, you know, other special guests, you know, heavy metal guys, you know, um, <clears throat> that we asked to do it. You know, of course, you know, we, we had asked Dino to do a song. I'm not sure if he's done it yet. And uh, so we're just putting that all together. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, and that's it. You know what I mean? I'm. You know, other than that, you know what I mean? Just just moving right along, you know what I mean? I got myself involved in publishing, you know what I mean? So I have a, a whole list of songs that's ready to go for, for movies and stuff. And oh, for, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I publish the songs. I'm a publisher, so I have my own, my own company with that. And uh, just take care of that stuff, you know what I mean? Take care of the artists, you know what I mean? Because I've yeah. seen when I, was with, when I was with the labels in, in L.A., you know, back in the day, you know, because I was playing guitar, learning all this stuff, and seeing all these bands, and seeing Rage Against the Machine, and seeing Tool, and seeing, you know what I mean, like Liquid Jesus, and Green Jello, and oh my God, this is great, great you know, Jane's Addiction, Primus, all these bands, like, oh my God, I was in high school, and uh, <clears throat> so I was playing all this guitar, and I had a Marshall, and I had my Les Paul, and all this stuff that I got from the jazz, the the jazz uh, uh, class, you know, one of the one of the guys was jamming in there, this old guy, he's like, yeah, I'll sell it to you, you know, 300 bucks, Les Paul, red one. I'll f never forgive myself for getting rid of that one, but um, <laughs> but uh, but you know what I mean. But I was playing, and I had a neighbor that her husband, her new husband, he ended up running. Uh, he ended up putting out that that movie. I mean that that song, uh, Regulate, by uh, Warren G. The one okay. with the, the the with the Michael McDonald piano. Oh, yeah. Do you mean I forget? Right. So uh, so. Uh, but he did that, so he was in. He was in the system, you know what I mean? So eventually he ran Death Row Records when Suge Knight went into jail. And at that time, I was networking in, because I had already graduated. I just graduated from high school, but I knew all the bands, and I knew a lot of people, or people knew me, you know what I mean? Like, they knew what was up, and it was, we had a mutual th thing going on, you know what I mean? Like, I knew I knew people in the system, and I knew bands, because I was in bands, you know, so, or I worked with bands, or we'd all end up at the same party, you know, that's how it all happened, you know, like, the metal guys were over there in, in that part of town doing their gigs, you know, the hip-hop guys were over there doing their gigs, but we all ended up at the same parties after, you know, because it closed at 1.30, you know, so we all ended up and making more music, you know, it was really great, making great relationships, you know, so that's how it happened with a lot of the guys that are the crew that I went to on Danzig with when I was at Danzig, you know, the poor kids and all that stuff, all my boys, Dougie and Russell, man, I'll never forget, you know, them, they've always helped me out, you know what I mean, those are the guys that run it, you know, those are the guys that, like, are always hucking it up, you know what I mean, like, all the crew, you know, Golden Voice back in the day, you know, like, they knew all this stuff, so they're the ones that run the tours 
for Danzig and for Slipknot and for, for Static X and all that stuff. And Tony and all them. Tony's my homie, you know what I mean? Dino's my homie, you know what I mean? We've known each other forever, you know? Like just working or being in the system together, you know? It's really cool. Just making those relationships, you know? And like it's been cool, you know? Like it's been a good time. And then working with all them. And then we're here in Vegas, right? Yeah. After all that stuff. And then we're here in Vegas and working the shows with you and all that stuff, you know, House of Blues and all this shit, right? <laughs> and they're coming in and they're like, ah, what's up? And they're like, what the fuck? How's this guy just fat boy know these guys? You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's all good. You know, it is what it is, you know? So, oh, yeah, man. We, we we did some crazy shit at the House of Blues. Man, man. those like, are some badass years, man. You know those what I mean? Were, like, man. That was the thing. Like, after I did the Danzig tour, my homie Russell called me, right? Because after... After House of Blues and everyone, you know, got, you know, went their own ways and stuff, you know, uh, my homie called me. He's like, hey, man, I need you for a month, homie. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, Danzig's going to be on tour. We're going to do on tour. You're going to be the tour security, and I'm going to be Danzig's bodyguard. But the other guy is not going to be with us. And I said, go for it. Let me know. So I ended up going with them. So I did that reality for a month <clears throat> with my homies um, from Possessed. Because my homies' backline was, they were the backline for Possessed at that time. It just so happened, you know, my boy Big Rob and Emilio and the guys from Sadistic Intent, they were the backline for Possessed because they were doing Possessed songs. So, so. Just like how Green Jello got their bands in, you know, all 50 yeah. states because there was, a, yeah. there was a band doing a Green Jello song. They said, hey, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'll fly out, it costs this much, we'll become the whole band, learn this set, there you go. And, and people have been, you know what I mean, like ramping up. Some are doing better than others and that's fine, you know what I mean? Some yeah. are just, you know what I mean, just doing it for a hobby and that's fine too. It's all fun, you know, just to let yourself out. And I'm so honored and privileged that he let me in like that and they let me in and that we all we all communicate and we all love each other. We just did um, uh, um, a call, a video call. There was like six or seven of us at a time. We're like, what's up? One guy from Canada, one guy in Seattle, one guy in Hollywood, one guy in Vegas, me. You know, one guy, I forget where he's in Oregon or whatever. It was just like out of control. We had all these people in different states. We're going to do that um, Jam Kazam. Have you heard that? No, but that sounds yeah. fun. Yeah. So you play here on your camera and plug in. Right onto Jam Kazam, and it's windows of all the people. So how's the timing on that, man? It's, like the, it's all it together. Fuck the groove no, all because up because you have to be plugged into the wall. You have to be internet plugged into the wall, not on inter not on the Wi-Fi. So what? Yeah, so, so there's like direct, a minimum upload and download in, yeah, that's a that you direct need to in. Have. Make sure you're direct in, and you have a, a some sort of uh, interface to get into your computer. Yeah, some way to mix it, and they even have right as you get into the page, they even have a little. A little thing that you buy that's an input output, you know, with phones, you know, the, for the two mics. Yeah, a little the, audio interface. Yeah, yeah, a little audio interface, a little one. You sell it right there. If you don't have one, we'll send one to you. This is, this is all you need, you know. Like volumes up, there you go. Play, you know what I mean? Like so. Fantastic idea. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna be making some stuff, you know. Again, releasing the album. I have some shirts coming out. I have what? shirts in ah. in in men's. I have like large through two X, and then I have men, uh, women's. I have. Um, Tank tops. I'm doing black tank tops with the with the graphic across okay. across the chest for the girls. You know what I mean? For some green jelly graphic. Just or, a green yeah. jelly graphic. You know what I mean? Just just make it simple. You know what I mean? Because everybody has their their pictures and stuff. I don't have my picture yet. You know what I mean? I don't got my my big burrito picture. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so so it's almost there. It's coming. But I want to make sure that people have, you know what I mean? Some shirts for the new album coming out and stuff. You know what I mean? For the new gigs that are gonna happen, and we're gonna have it. You know what I mean? So I'm only gonna and I'm only charging twenty bucks for it. You know, shipping's included. You know what I mean? Like you know. You know, you know how it goes, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but yeah, so. That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, just playing around with it, man, you know. Yeah. You know that. Dude, Green Jelly puts on a great show. We had them at the uh, at Vamped, man, and yeah. uh, they had, like, as many people as they could fit on the stage, yeah. up on stage, usually we puppet ask outfits. For, and usually we ask for, um, for 20 to 30 people. Yeah. From the crowd. Yeah. From the crowd. And sometimes it's the whole crowd yeah. and the whole concert happens on the stage and there's no one in the, the venue. And that's fine. <laughs> Those are fun. Those are so, you know, ultra personal. Unfortunately, we can't do that right now, right now. Yeah. But it's, you know, at least that theme, you know, but it's all good. We can still jam out. You know what I mean? Like I saw some really cool videos that the Blue Man guys did. You know what I mean? Um, that's that's a couple of their jams. It's recent, you know, that they just did a jam together. That's one of their songs, you know. So. Like actual Blue Man or like Uber Shaw? Uh, no, the actual, the actual, the actual, blue, like blue man, the blue actual man? blue man group guys. Oh, okay. That are jamming at home and they're on their own equipment. Oh, and they, cool. That's how you know. Just do a video of all the 
you know what I mean, all the instruments happening at the same time. And again, it's all mixed in together all at once. Oh. And it's a live performance of them playing. It was really good. That's fun. Yeah, that's why we're going to do the, the Green Jello one. We just talked about it last night. You know, they're like, yeah, this this place, Jam Kazam or whatever. I was like, Psh, I'm on. I'm on. Let's do it. You know what I mean? My son, I already hooked it up. So nice. I just got to get a long cable now to reach from my internet to my computer. Like, let me sign up a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got to check that out, Jam Kazam, man. Yeah. That's freaking cool, man. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a bummer missing out on uh, gigging and playing, and I haven't even been jamming at all, really, man. I've yeah. just been working on this thing, yeah. just trying to, I don't know, just hanging out at home, reading books, and yeah. fucking working on a podcast, and yeah. figuring out my next fucking move, man. It's uh, yeah. it's rough when there's no one to perform for. Exactly. Well, there's the whole internet to perform for, you know what I mean? So we yeah. got to figure out a way to jam together. Have you know play these three songs? Play these three songs. These three songs. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. And we're all gonna be on headphones together. We're gonna hear each other. We're yeah. gonna be mixed in with each other on as it's going live. You know, so so it's gonna be really fun. You know what I mean? So you can still jam together. You know, so call your oh, mom. you're gonna put that out on the. You're gonna like jam and people. We're gonna can play. Watch. We're gonna play. We're gonna have a Green Jello performance on a video on live stream. Oh fuck! You know what I mean? We're going to do that. So we got to get all the members right now doing it. You know, shh, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. It's a secret. Watch out, you know. But a lot of people are going to be doing that. You know, a lot of people are going to be doing that. We also have a, um, a um, an augmented reality uh, version of that. Oh, which yeah? You can buy the goggles, right? Buy the goggles, and it has. You could see. I see. I will be able to see you. It's not like the virtual. It's not like the virtual reality where it's a screen in front of you and you can't see. Yeah. You know what I mean, you can't see through it. This is like these are like goggles that you can see through it, right? And what it it has a film in it, right? It has a uh, some sort of way that they have it, so you could see a video game with you and me happening, shooting at each other, going pew 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 pew. <laughs> like this side is the pow pow, and this is the pew pew pew. You know, <laughs> so we're shooting like laser tag at yeah. each other, but with the goggles on. Yeah. You, because I, because it graph it, it, it um it graphs the whole. You know what I mean? The scale of the room. Yeah. So you got to do that. You got to let it do its thing. Da, 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 da. And you have like a little like a little laser tag little pouch because it has to have the computer that's doing all this, right? Yeah. So what it does is it'll look around the whole room and it'll have like little aliens and little like alien like like graphic um what do you call it? Um, like plants and trees and, 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 and a big old like statue of some like alien guy right there or some like God hanging out right there. Like, like that's not going to let you go past the, um, this stairwell without fighting him. Okay. But it's like a little game, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, you know, there's like a little like goblin right here hanging out on your s screen. You know what I mean? When you go around, you see him hanging out on your, on your, on your, <laughs> your couch or on your, your, yeah. uh, your counter right there. You know what I mean? Because it's scaled it scaled out the room. So anywhere you look, there's going to be something new. There's going to be, you know what I mean? There's going to be like, but it's just right here. You know what I mean? It's not like, it's not like yeah. the whole house is necessarily graphed out. It's just like for what you see. So when, so it slides into the next thing and you like see like all these little things happening, but there's a video <laughs> game part of it, but we're thinking of, and you could put virtual people in there. Okay. You could put a live performance of, let's say, the police comes out and decides to get back together or something. Yeah. And they say, Hey, how much will you pay? You know what I mean? So they're going to be the, you know what I mean? You could make it, you know? So there's, there's a version, there's, there's different aspects of, even though we got to stay home right now, you can still get those concerts. You can still yeah. make it happen. You can still satisfy that part of what we were doing. Even though we can't be in the arena as much as I want to be in the arena, as much as I want to be playing and building them, building them so fun. You're just watching it happen. You know what I mean? It's like, I agree. you know what I mean? It's just that sensation that you get. And you and I have done it for years. You know, that's the, that's the whole job, you know, that we've been doing, you know, it's a fantastic so, and, job. And that's what got me even more knowledge on how to do what I'm going to do with my music. You know what I mean? And that's where my schooling came from. I wasn't, I didn't like the way school was or maybe that time in my life where I was at, where I had the opportunity to be in the label. So how am I going to not do that and go, and go to school? You know, it's kind of like, you know what I mean? And even some of my teachers back then when I was in like jazz, improv and stuff, you know, they were like, 
You know what I mean? And like the, the school might slow you down. Yeah. You're already at a level of stuff. And at that time, I was already, you know, mimicking Rage Against the Machine and Tool and doing all this drop D sound garden stuff. And they're just like, what the heck? You know what I mean? Like, and he's like, a couple of the times they're like, you're, you might be like a little like ready to go. <laughs> like, you might not have to get a degree. <laughs> and not that I don't, and I wanted to. And actually, I came back when I went to school here in Vegas. You know, I took the business yeah. one. You know what I mean? I got some all kinds of other, like, oh, no wonder. I learned about publishing. I learned about the royalties. I learned about who, where the money comes from. I learned about, you know what I mean, like producing movies. I learned about where, how it happens, who gets what, why, why, you know what I mean, it's it's only so much. And I'm like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, yeah. I get it. You know what I mean? I can't be, I can't be the spoiler brat, like, I want it all, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to work <laughs> for you. You know, and they're going to be like, yeah, good, thank you, later, boom, and that opportunity is gone forever. Yeah. Ever. Big time. And don't ever bring it up, too, because you're going to remind them. You know what I mean? Like, and then yeah. they're going to kick you out again. You know? So, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not who you know. You know, it's who knows you. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. make sure, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's not always who you know. It's, you know, how the world's know a lot what, smaller or, than you think it is, Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, you got to be careful. You know what I mean? You got to, like, realize it. You know what I mean? Don't get that thing get hurt, get you hurt all the time. You know, stand up for yourself, yeah. Don't let them fucking walk on you. And just don't also don't step into that situation don't be there you know if that's not for you then don't do it you know what i mean it's a lot of things you know that's how i came out of you know a lot of dangers that were in you know i mean southern california you know growing up in the san gabriel valley you know what i mean like all that stuff pico rivera and all that stuff like i had to get out of i didn't want to be part of that because that's that that's a nowhere that's a no way you know i mean nowhere for me at least you know what i mean like maybe it works for people that's cool as far as i'm going i knew i had music in me i knew i you know i started on saxophone when i was eight years old i already wanted to play drums but they wouldn't let me because it's too loud. And I said, okay. <laughs> I ended up playing your know, electric guitar. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, you know, so, but anyway, but it started on sax. You know what I mean? I learned how to play sax. You know, I have a, um, a great uncle that's um, uh, uh, Manny Matas, who is an old trumpet player, right, from uh, from a group they call Los Tres in, in La Hoya in, in, in Tucson, Arizona, right, right under A Mountain. And there's an artist known as, I believe it's Lalo... Lalo Guerrero or Lalo Gutierrez, I forget his name, um, what the original one is, but, um, but he, Lalo Guerrero, that's who it is, yeah, yeah, apparently they grew up in the same place, but he's like the founder of of the Latin sound, and he did the the soundtrack pretty much for for like Zoot Suit and all that stuff, right? So Lalo, Lalo, he knows, you know, a lot of people know him, but he was he was one of the ones that grew up with my uncle, and that got influence. You know what I mean? So they all knew each other. So it turns out that my uncle wrote a bunch of the songs that are Lalo's hits for him. He's the one who was writing it because my, my uncle knew how to do the composition. He knew composing. So knew, he knew how to write out the scales and the charts and everything on the, on the paper. Okay. So our family just got, um, uh, well, just got, we just had a, a stack of them, a stack of them in a chest of all the songs that they found that are all the written by hand ones, the only Latin written music that exists so now it's in like the santa monica university of santa monica like the museum that they have down there and like they're looking at the smithsonian institute like to be part of that so it's just like oh not not bad cool (laughs) (laughs) go figure go figure (laughs) so good thing for my cousin you know what i mean my cousin you know his his son you know is taking care of that so that's pretty good you know like not bad, uncle. Not bad. You know, I didn't know none of this until like recently. Yeah. You know, because I've been, you know, my, my mom's showing me pictures of stuff, you know, of like my family and stuff, you know, like everybody went to the to the army, but there's one or the military. But there's um, there's one that was always in like a, like a shirt, but like a white shirt. And like he had like, you know, what I mean, like he was in his in his band band uniform you know because he was playing the trumpet you know he was on stage at the bar yeah. so all the brothers are all in like 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 suits but he's like they're like hey you know but that's my <laughs> uncle manny you know what i mean he like, but he ended up uh right there in san gabriel and my uncle and i mean my grandpa ended up in lincoln heights where um 
where I, you know, spent a lot of my, my childhood at, you know, that's how I know L.A., you know what I mean? So it's, like, it's really cool, you know, and like a lot of people that I know go to those same bars that we used to, that I used to, you know, walk into him with and have, you know, Shirley Temple, you know what I mean, some peanuts with, you know, ah. when he used to go collect, you know, because I think they used to bet, you know what I mean? They used to bet on the Dodgers and all this stuff, you know, he used to call, he used to call them the Lost Again Dodgers, you know, like, <laughs> Lost Again Dodgers, good job, you know, like, yeah, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> Uh, they have, that's where I get my sense of humor from, I guess, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. I, uh, <laughs> I get my sense of humor from my dad. He just never shuts the hell up. <laughs> He's always trying to crack a joke and say something inappropriate, yeah. something ridiculous. But, yeah, yeah man, damn. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy journey, man. A crazy journey. Yeah, that's watching killer. Watching all that stuff, you know what I mean? You know, we we're supposed to do um, Helsinki and Finland again this year, but that, those got taken taken out. We we're supposed to do the booze cruise. We're supposed to do the booze cruise around the Statue of Liberty. Oh, really? Yeah. That sounds like fun. With a band called Schism. I don't know if you heard of them. They're a, they're a tool band. Okay. They're a tool cover band. Okay. They're like the only ones that they like allow allow to have like to do the songs. You know what I mean? So you gotta have you gotta you can't just do tool. You can't just do a tool song. You know, you, you better it's have it right. So hard. And you better get it, you know, you better be able to to, to rough it through those 13, 13 minutes of brutal, brutal drums, you know what I mean? Cause that's like ridiculous, you know what I mean? Dude, we were doing uh some tool covers uh at the Zito Jam and it was like learning a couple fucking tool songs was a goddamn marathon. Yeah. Like that is some of the hardest stuff. Yeah. And then I was stuck singing it too. Ah. Almost to get up on stage and sing it, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, no, that was that was very difficult. I got like I watched my skill set go up yeah, yeah, every I time I learned like, a new tool song. It's yeah. but it's just so much. Yeah, you know, yeah. But. Now, like after after the first couple of albums, I like not that I stopped learning their songs. I was just like, you know what? That's I think I got the gist of it. And I didn't learn like as many as I learned from before, or maybe it was I didn't have time or what it, whatever it was. But now I'm learning them again, and I'm like, wow, dude, it's like it's a really they're really cool rhythms, and I'm really happy that that I kept playing them. You know what I mean? Like I'm like I guess I have OCD, you know, because I'll like I'll play the same damn song for like an hour straight. You know what I mean? I mean when when it comes to tool, you know, maybe longer. But you yeah. know what I mean? But I'll play the same damn song over and over and over. That's what it takes, right? Again, that's how you do it. You know what I mean? Like it's like and that's how I learned, you know, just like you ever seen that movie Coco? And maybe you know like a little kind of like a like a tear tear jerker there, you know, when you see the kid when he's growing up mm. and he's sitting there in front of the T V watching an idol play guitar and mimic him and mimic what he's hearing and mimic maybe how that's how, it, how how it's happening and that's what I used to do when I was a kid and I was there hanging out you know watching Purple Rain and Purple watching you know other you know watching Tom and Jerry watching you know like um, Bugs Money dun, 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 <laughs> watching him do Beethoven and all these Mozart and all this stuff like those were like incredible songs and those were incredible vibrations that I was hearing and then plus when my, my, my parents introduced me to like a lot of the classic rock a lot of the dire straits and a lot of like stuff like that you know the eagles and i was like i want to do that you know like one time me and my dad we were traveling from la to tucson and his tr6 had one of them triumphs right and um and he had an eight track in there so when he threw in the eagles you listen to the whole album because there's no rewind on it you know what i mean so it's like you listen to the whole damn thing you know what i mean like shit so he would just throw in them and dire straits and stuff and he would just we would just chill you know and when i heard you know like sultans of swing and you know the waterline and all that stuff i was like i want to play like that how does he do that like i want to do that like and i must have been like four or five years old when i when 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 i was you know traveling like that or hearing these things you know when i was listening to like like Eric Clapton, you know, just listening to just the harmonies that were happening, you know, and, and I wanted to do that. I always wanted to do that, you know what I mean? And it's like, all right, we'll do it, you know what I mean? So it just, just, it just, I just absorbed it, you know what I mean? It's like, I got to do music, I got to do music. Dude, I know exactly what you mean, man. Growing up, all these different yeah. things started popping out to me in music and like, uh, uh, I remember specifically one of them being uh, the, the the 80s rock singers singing like chicks. Right. And it confused the hell out of me when I was a kid. I was like, 
but I thought that was a girl and I'd see the picture and it's like some dude with this yeah. and it, I was just like well, but why is he singing so high pitched yeah, and, and it's like going, yeah. and it's like well how do it's see how it's making you feel <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're weirded <laughs> out you know it's like oh or not that you're weirded out by it it makes you feel something yeah right? yeah, yeah. it know? gives it's you a vibration you're like whoa it, yeah. hey it's happening and that was crazy man you know what I mean like hearing all the stories and stuff of how how stuff happened about how like the same seamstresses, you know what I mean, were taking care of Molly Crew and taking care of all the all the bands at the same time when all that was happening. So that's why they all had the same outfits on, you know what I mean? They all had all yeah. that stuff, you know. It was like, all right, you know. Ha <laughs> I get it. I get it. Unfortunately, you know, yeah. you know, different, you know, thing with uh with Green Jello is where they when they they took the foam from the Scientology uh dumpster. Oh God. That's where those first and duct taped all the first pigs and all the first you know wolves and all the first ones out of those. You know? uh, so Scientology helps, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, so it was part of that, you know. And it's funny because one of the, one of the ladies, I forget what her name was, but she was uh, she did a rock magazine, and um, she was like, yeah, I kind of, you know, like don't understand them all the time, you know, like Tool and stuff. And it's like, and I'm thinking in my head, well, actually, they were like an anti, like rock scene like our anti Motley Crue uh, poison band you know so it was like yeah. everything that they're not you know what I mean it was like yeah. oh, no you know what I mean so it's like that's maybe that's where it's at you know what I mean but it was really really good really interesting to see where everything was at you know what I mean and how how the band evolved you know and how like they had an original the, the bass player actually I hear was was main, a main a main part of the songs you know what I mean a main part he of the first gems and when he left you know, he didn't he didn't agree with the way the agreements were going. So when he quit the band, um, they got Justin Chancellor, you know, and then he re re remained with all that band. During that time, though, he still had royalties with the first two albums. So when they released them on stream, yeah, psh, they went that. And at the same time, my homie Tony from Static X. Well, he was also in, you know, other bands, you know, like with Asesino, with, with Dino from Fear Factory. So they have like their, their, their kind of brujeria style, you know, like Mexican, uh, you know, Spanish speaking band. You know, my homie uh, Emilio from Possessed is the drummer. So all three of them, they have their whole program going. And he has, you know, all these other bands going on, you know, that he's playing with Soulfly and playing with Sepultura and playing with Possessed and doing all this stuff. And with Ministry, right? So he's with Ministry and he's in Ministry for a while. So when Static X came back around, he was able to take lead for that, and he was able to direct everything. So he had to pass the bass line, the bass from Ministry, onto Paul Diamore, which is the old bass player from Tool. <laughs> That's how all that happened, you know. So dun, 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 just stiffed out like that. So now Paul, Paul Diamore from Tool, the original Tool, is the bass player for for Ministry. Jeez. So yeah. So it's crazy. It's crazy. Such a small world out yeah, yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's a way. It's like especially it, it, in those it, it little musical circles. Like that, you know what I mean? It just happens. You know what I mean? And you know, I, I'm a, I'm I'm blessed to be able to like be there when things are happening or be part of that vibration of that part of life that's happening in that dimension, right? You yeah. Because I mean? it was crazy. You know, when I was younger, and before I got, I think it was before the label. Before I got hired with the label, I was doing some some guitar stuff for some Chicano guys called Crazy Race, right? I was doing some some just live guitar parts and they would have gigs and I would do I would play along with the song. I would give it some beef, you know what I mean, give it some some guitar on it, you know, we dug it, dug it, you know what I mean? It's a lot of friends from like the cycle realm people and like, you know, like all that that side of town, right? So so I was jamming with them and one day we went to a party at um Young Moguls, this place in Hollywood, right? And it was the All Star Jam. And our homie Big Marv went, took us down there. My homie's from the Rhyme Poetic Mafia, the guy uh, Ace from from uh, Ice T's Ice T's crew and everything. And uh, my boy Mike and and Mark from Crazy Race, you know, took me along. And we walk in this place, and it was Cypress Hill with the guys from Down, and the guys from Jane's Addiction. Oh damn! Yeah. So it was a big old jam they had, and it was all star jam, right? And there was a lot of the friends were there. A lot of the people I knew from the metal scene were in there. So I walked in with the hip hop heads. You know what I mean? Right? I walked in with all the Chicanos. You know what I mean? And like, and like a lot of a couple of my friends were there. So it was like it was really cool, just running in like that, you know, or like running into it like that, you know. And it's like, all right, I see where it's at, you know. And this is when I was younger. So this is when I was like barely starting to go to the Rainbow. 
You yeah. Know? And when the rainbow happened, oh, that was that was a whole other story, man. And, that's, and we ended up playing the rainbow, Green Jello. We had the it was like the 25th anniversary barbecue. You know, we opened up for Warrant. You know what I mean? And Sweet. You know, we played with Sweet, bro. You I know love what I mean? like, Sweet, yeah, dude. We played with Sweet, bro. You know what I mean? Like Aww. heavy duty, man. We're up there in back, you know, in back of the rainbow and back of the Roxy. So it's, you know what I mean? It was like family. It was like great. You know what I mean? I loved it. You know what I mean? So so we have a good time when we go there at the rainbow, man. I miss that place right now. Like, big time, man. It's like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's rough having the venues fucking cut off, man. You know yeah. that that uh, that's a big gathering point for everybody. Everybody's yeah, yeah, you know yeah. really if we can't, just going if we there can't every get single them weekend. Together again, what are we gonna do? You know, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna uh, you know keep the music going? You know what I mean? Like so, that's why I I, I was interested in that that um, that jam kazam. The jam kazam. The jam kazam. Yeah. So you always gotta have a plan B. You know what I mean? You always gotta yeah, have a plan. Like I would drive a forklift and I got in jam. That that's the that's the, the little box right, right there. there. That's pretty cool, man. Dun, that's perfect. Dun. That's all you need. Yeah. Yeah. Right there, yeah. Yeah. This pl- this is pretty cool, man. Yeah. So I just I signed up, and, and you could do it yourself with tracks on your mixer, right? Yeah. By yourself. Yeah. Or you could do it with everybody, and everybody hears the one track you're playing because you're all in the same room together. So you just plug in, and there you go. You're all hearing the same thing on earphones at the same time. So that's why the click is right there. You know? oh. So it's all right there. So that's why they say don't do it on uh, uh, Wi-Fi. Do it straight, dialed straight. And so I got to yeah. get a big, pay, big, um, bigger cable. You know. So yeah, I need to start doing that too as well, man. Yeah. I got myself a nice cable to uh, to to hook up to uh, my laptop when I play Magic because I'm a nerd and I like to play Magic online a lot. Yeah. But uh, it, it lags hella hard if I'm not using a lag ca- land cable. You know, you got to exactly, yeah. make that shit happen. Yeah, I have the little the little um, the connector and stuff. I just got cable. The funny thing is, all this all these stories and stuff. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, when I was in Pico Rivera under the avocado tree, um, <laughs> I never had cable. You know, even in my household, when we did have cable, um, I, my room was the bigger room, of course. You know, but ours didn't have the phone jack in it. So when they did the cable, it just didn't have it, and they split. So they, I sorry, mijo, you know, like, oh, it's no problem. You know what I mean? So I never really had any of these outlets of like learning stuff. I didn't have the mm-hmm. YouTube or, or seeing MTV when it was actually music, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. or stuff like that. I did see, there were a couple of music shows. Oh, you missed out on that? That's I missed out on all that's all that MTV stuff, all that stuff. I missed out on all that, you know what I mean? So, so uh, I was busy being part of it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, so, um, so, <laughs> uh, that's so, great, uh, that's great. so now that this COVID thing happened, yeah. I finally got the internet. This, I mean, when I was with my with my ex girlfriend, you know what I mean? Like she had she had cable and stuff, and that was cool. You know what I mean? It was like you know there were a couple things, but you know she gets tired. She would get tired of ancient aliens after a while. You know? I love ancient aliens. Come on, aliens. I know, dude. It was funny, and that that's how I ended up going to uh, to Chichen Itza, going to the pyramids because it was about that. Oh, they had did the Az- you go? Yeah, they had the Aztec pedal, and she was all like. She was interested in it. I explained yeah. a couple of things about it, how it's the one and only, uh, you know what I mean, like monument that's shifted like that. Everything else is northwest, northwest. You know what I mean? It has it's all the cardinal points. All the other monuments in the world are cardinal points. Yeah. All of them, except that one. It's, 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 it's shifted over. Oh, really? You didn't know that? That's how that's no. how the shadows happen. I that's didn't. How, that's how the shadows during the, the equinoxes, when really? they come up and down. Yeah, look up, look up Chichen Itza pyramid. I look am up the seasons. Up. Yeah. Uh, damn, Chitsu. Chitsu. C H I T Z. C H like chit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chit. Like blitz, yeah. <laughs> blitz and chits. Yeah. Blitz and chits. I got the chits. Chits. Uh, let's chits just go in. for a U. Zunichu. I'm gonna try that. Uh, Chitsunitsa? Chitsunitsa, that's Ah, it. that's it, that's yeah. it, that's There's it. There's videos of I'm, the I'm actual... I'm better when I can read it. Yeah. Oh, it's showing results for... Okay, here we go. It has videos. So now that one, during the during the equinoxes, um, the sun comes down, right? And and the, the, the shadows on the side right there... Oop, oop, oop. Yeah, that place right there. The shadows on the side. See how those people are standing? There's a... There's a um, there's a, uh, a dragon head at the bottom of the stairs. See where the people are standing right there on the left-hand side? Let's see if I can zoom in. I click yeah. the little zoom in button. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to do it or not. I don't yeah. know. But oh. if you can notice right there at the at the left-hand corner. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Oh. You little bitch. 
Oh, wait. It's the other corner. It's the, the other, other corner. It's back. over here. Look at yeah. it. I see it. Oh, see success. How there, see how there's a, um, a dragon? Yeah. Right. So during the equinox, if you come back out again, during the equinox, those, those, uh, those steps right there, they make a shadow on the side of the stairs. And it makes like like the like the the spikes on the back of a dragon. Oh, and really? And during the equinox, it comes down during sun during during the sunset, and then during the other equinox, when it when it when it happens, it goes upwards. The the, the shadow goes up. Look for the video of the of, video the of the this yeah equi of the equinoxes. Let's see and here. It shows. I'm gonna go back to you while I search the internet. Yeah, well, we ended up going because she was she was pretty interested with it too. So, and there was a cruise, and I was like, okay, let's go. That's cool. <laughs> man. Say, no. Let's see if I can find a video here. Oh, there is video. There is video. Yeah. Uh, let's click on this thing here. See what it says. Uh, uh, oh, it's YouTube though. I could probably get in trouble for fucking playing someone else's video. Yeah, it's all good. But there's other there's videos of it. You know what I mean? If you see it. Yeah. Well, you can watch it though, right? Without, I can see. Yeah, yeah, I can okay. see. I can see without fucking. Oh yeah, yeah, shadows and everything cast everywhere. So it comes down, and it's the, with the one and only monument that's shifted degrees over. When you look at it from space, someone had to everything be else is 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 graphed. Everything else on the world is graphed. You know what I mean? At the corners. You know what I mean? Be it one or two degrees, but still, it's in that direction. Yeah, definitely. You know I mean? no, it's still looking there. You put a, this one you put is a pyramid zoom. in the cardinal direction. Yeah, this one's totally zoom. It's, it's shifted over. That's how you do pyramid, son. Yeah, yeah. It was really everybody really, knows that's how you make a pyramid. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> Fucking yeah. around. But yeah, all that stuff was really interesting to me. You know what I mean? And that's how uh, a lot of the stuff that Green Jello. We, we believe in aliens and the stuff at, um, <clears throat> at Landers, California, the big rock and all that stuff, you know, the, um, the Integratron, you know, this guy back in the, back in the 1900s, sometime in the 50s, 60s, you know what I mean? He built this big old dome out there, right? And it was pretty much a sound dome to pull up uh, vibrations to talk to the aliens, you know what I mean? And he would make, and there was this rock there with a bunch of crystals on it and those crystals you make the little bowl out of and you do the you do the the, the, the frequencies with it and it's it's Tibetan singing bowl. Yeah, it's real yes. Yeah, I have a bunch of those actually. Yeah, yeah. So the Integratron, if you look that up, that's where the whole story from the um what do you call it? From the um the Rosetta Stone from Tool comes from. Yeah. Where he's talking about, oh my God, you know, with all these people and all this stuff, you know what I mean? Well, it's, yeah, because there were visitors that happened to one of the people back in the day that came to the studio. <laughs> and they said, really? And some of the members from us, you know, from Bill and all them went. So they went with, you know what I mean? They went with uh, his wife and they went to this thing and there were visitors, all right. And they got, they got, yeah. They saw, Does sound and they cool. were like, get the hell out of here. So he went <laughs> banging on Danny Carey's, you know what I mean? The story goes, and you can look it up, yeah. uh, goes banging on Danny Carey's studio and walks in like, oh, my God, I saw this. And he's just talking all this stuff, you know, Bill Manspeaker. And that's where, uh, you know, at that time, you know, they were jotting it down, and that's where they came with the story from, from Rosetta Stone. So, like, he was visited. They were visited. And, like, time, it's a time, it's a time, um, uh, mover, you know what I mean? Okay. The Integratron, that 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 movement where it's at, the people and all the the people and all the stuff, the ingredients that are there, yeah. the the visitors come and they'll they'll wipe you out. You know, there were some people that were that were pretty damaged at that time that were part of the Green Jello family that you know this happened to. And this is this is in uh, Landing Landing California. It's Lander no Landers, yeah Landers California. It's the Integratron. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. Yeah, Integra Tron. Integra Tron. It's the dome. You'll see it. Tan tan tan. Oh, yeah, I see a big dome. Yeah. I see a big dome. Yeah, and that rock right there. Integratron. There was a big, there was a big, there's a big rock oh, right there, right? Nice. And it came, this light came around, and it went, it went all the way across like football fields, and down to the horizon, and then came all the way back. Really? And the whole, the you know the Tool album that has the, the the anatomy of a man, 
and it has the circle and it has the flames with the eye eyeballs in it and the flames are coming out like that well that's the way this ball was that they saw that was coming up through that it had these things it wasn't flames it wasn't eyeballs but it was like filaments or like some sort of like flesh things on the side of it doing that you know what i mean it was like this big circle this big like circle that came up you know and when they ran back out you know what i mean there were like these like thousands thousands of white little little lights that were all around them and they got the fuck out of there you know what i mean they were like holy shit you know what i mean like all their stuff in their car because at the time you know what i mean like he was doing he had uh, uh clubs going on and stuff and there was you know they were they were happening you know what i mean so it was just like it's a crazy story they're telling us like they're like I was on like, no way. I thought, see, when I first had heard that, I even told him, I thought that was, that was like the story of how L. Ron Hubbard got Scientology going. Like he was visited or something. He's like, nah, dude, he's like, that was me. He's like, I went to go visit it and got visited and I fucking went and ran and fucking into, into Danny Carey's studio and told him all this shit and all of a sudden it became a song. You know what I mean? Like pretty much, you know, that was it. I was like, oh, <laughs> that is crazy. We're in Sweden. He's telling me the story. I might have it on video somewhere. He's telling the story. Um, but it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like all this stuff. And I was like, you're kidding me. And like, he's like, yep. He's like, that's what happened. And as much as unbelievable sometimes things are, when I was coming out of House of Blues one time at Mandalay Bay, yeah, it was and it was a late night one night. We had something. It was like I, it must have been two forty eight or something. I remember when I got out, like, or it was uh, like three. It was around three o'clock in the morning, right? I'm coming out of the Russell. I mean the um, the Frank Sinatra exit in the back, and I see. And this is before the stadium, right? way before the stadium. We were still at the House of Blues, so I see this big old light go all the way down from overhead because I'm in I'm in the um, I think I was in, I wasn't in the bug. I think I was in the van. So I see this big old light come down, right? Go to Red, Red Rock. And like, just like the mountains are your, 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 your uh, sofa right there. Yeah. It just went over me went, and then it was gone. And I was like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> like this one thing when there's a light that glares on your, you know, on your, your uh, window, right? From let's say street lights or like from the lights in the garage, right? Yeah. At Mandalay. But no, when I came out, I saw this thing just go zoom. And I was like, whoa. And I turned right there to go like to Russell because I was going to take the Russell out. Yeah. And when I turned, I was all, what the? I was thinking in my head, like, what the fuck was that shit? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm looking straight like in the freeways on the side of me right there. And I look to the side, and all of a sudden it does this. It goes, vroom. it goes, it does, it does a thing like that. Really? It's a diamond with a circle in the middle, and and a light in the middle of that. And then on each of the corners of the diamond, there was lights, and it was a circle with the, something in the middle. It, and then that's what it looked like when it came up and over, over the horizon of Red Rock, the whole can, because you could see the whole canyon at that time. Nothing was built there. Yeah. Nothing, you know what I mean. So there was so you could see everything from from Lone Mountain like to to the end to Blue to Blue Diamond. You could see the whole thing, and I just saw it go like and like go down. I was like, Ugh! and I went home, and I remember I was living right there across the street from the Palms, and I was like, holy shit, man! And I was I remember sitting in my 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 in my my couch, holy squaw, you know what I mean? Like what the fuck was that? You know what I mean? Should I? I think. I don't know if I was on Facebook yet or I was, there was still MySpace, but I was, I remember thinking yeah. like, well, people think I'm weird if I throw it on there. Like, well, you know what I mean? Did I see that? Like, cause I was still like, it was still like fresh in my brain. And I remember waking up that next morning, like remembering that, like what the fuck was that? You know what I mean? So I don't even know if, you know what I mean? So I believed in a lot of that stuff. And that was one vibration that the green jello, you know what I mean? Like Bill Manspeaker, yeah. like he's all fuck. Yeah, dude, that's, we're not alone here, dude. Don't let them think that. And they know more than you, you know what I mean? Like I know that they know more than they're telling us, you know what I mean? Like, you know. so we, uh, used to pick up my old drummer, uh, DJ Harper, who ironically, I just started, uh, chatting with on, uh, on the Facebook messenger. I haven't talked to him in a while, mm -hmm. but, uh, now I'm telling a story about him weird uh so we're taking dj home and it's like an hour and a half drive through fucking nowhere and uh out way the fuck out in the distance 
we see some lights on the top of a mountain or whatever and we think that oh yeah it's a fucking house up there like obviously or whatever you're we're not even really paying attention to these lights right yeah. until you did notice it though yeah 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 you see them out there because there's nothing else out there it's yeah. pitch fucking black right and uh, except for well maybe there's just some people on this fucking mountain and then uh and then all of a sudden as we get closer to the lights it lifts off the mountain and comes over and flies real fucking low right over here just like i'm doing with my hand real like super slow just the slowest fucking moving thing i ever seen and it comes over our car again and then it just kind of cruises back away from us and it's like gone faster than we can it seems like it's moving away from us really slowly yeah but it was just gone really like it, like, like yeah, the, the faded away. To, it was like, just what? Yeah, yeah, like it didn't seem like it was going away very. Like yeah. as it cruised over, it's really slow, and then kind of took off, and it yeah. felt like it was still moving at the speed it was going away from us when it was cruising over our car. Yes, and then, but it was just gone. And uh, I, and obviously, this is an for me an unidentified flying object because I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, that was my little that was my little alien experience. All of us saw it. It didn't make any fucking noise, right? Yeah. Which was weird. And it flew right over the top of us, and then fucking flew over us again. Like it was checking us out, and uh, it got real low to the ground. And uh, yeah, 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 it didn't make any fucking noise. That's nothing. That's nuts. Yeah. And it was yeah. Just, then it was gone. Yeah, I didn't hear nothing spectacular either when it was doing that. You know, when it went yeah. down and did that, I was like, Ugh, what the hell? You know yeah. what I mean? So I Dude. believe it. You know. I mean, Who knows what the fuck's out there, man? Yeah, definitely. We're definitely. Yeah. I don't think we're, we're the only beings or anything like that. And we're not, and and the way that we are, the way that we are as a being, as a flesh, as a matter. Yeah. That's yeah. That's nice on this earth, on this planet. Yeah. What if there's something else? They're made. Yeah. Life forms, you know, that are that are frequencies or that are other frequencies that float. And that, you know what I mean? That are of light or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. really of that, you know? Or even I mean? just can, something that's like um, at, at, at a more advanced stage in their evolution, like what we're doing with our evolution, yeah. where we're already figuring out how to fucking, you know, grow all of our internal organs and replace yeah. all our body parts with better functioning body parts. Yeah. Um, like the people that have those fucking legs that can just launch them. Oh, yeah. They're not allowed to even compete in the regular Olympics, yeah. you know? Yeah. And because they're just, it's just not even fair to someone who has yeah. regular legs. Yeah, and that's, going to keep going that direction um, until all of a sudden it's like what the fuck are we doing in these fleshy bodies yeah. and especially um, with uh, like space travel interstellar travel like if you're going to have to just like shut down for 75 years while you haul ass at whatever speed you're going at yeah. you know and then pop back up it's like you can't do that with the human body but you could do that with something that's much more advanced than that yeah, right? you know what I mean like there's no way that like the muscles that we grow, that we become in our legs and our hips and in our back because of the gravity and because of the way we walk are going to be the same yeah. if they're born in space or they're yeah. born on another planet or born on the moon. You know what I mean? Like, well, we're already that, dealing with that that's shit. Another, that's another part. You know what I mean? It's, it, was a, it was a really cool, um, like we are, we are um, like advancing in certain spots and it's it's really cool, you know. What I mean, there's other there's other spots that that I was you know, you know, researching about like, because I'm always really I've always been really interested in the origin of things, you know what I mean? And yeah. like, like as much as you know what I mean, like, like I have nothing against necessarily, like, a religion as much as I have, like a dislike for someone that treats people bad because of a religion you know what yeah I mean? like that's not that's not good to me you know what i mean so i would i've always i've always you know growing up catholic you know what i mean like going through that whole first holy communion and all that stuff all the processes and all that stuff and that's cool and i got you know i got the the gist from that you know i'm not necessarily like you know a church going person you know what i mean i believe in in a higher power i mm -hmm. believe in don't be an ass and don't be you know the three the three main things there's a higher power uh -huh. don't be an ass and don't kill no one yeah. You know what I mean? That's basically what it is. You know, I, mean? I do believe in that higher power, and yeah. I believe in that, and somehow we all believe in in some sort of higher higher power, whatever religion or way it is, yeah. and that's okay. You know what I mean? That's cool. You know, when they start using it's a crucial it, part of society, yeah, honestly, well, because you know, there's 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 ancient ancient uh, tablets. You know what I mean? Sumerian yeah. tablets that tell the same exact story as the Bible, except it's like yeah. the full version, and it's known that certain religions, you know, what I mean, have edited. You know what I mean? 
yeah. versions f- for a king. That's why it's called the King James yeah. version because it's the version for him. You know what I mean? Like the the you know what I mean? Like it's not the all of it that the one that that actually happened. You know what I mean? And which is which is a really intriguing question that I like that I saw happening. You know, and when I was researching it, when it was like the more you actually you know what I mean? Like delve into it. It's like, oh, this might be another story. Yeah. This might be something else. Well, and I think that's you why know, a lot of people like, like oh. to research the Quran uh, as well, because yeah. it's it's like they're doing the same thing. You know, they're interpreting yeah. these same stories for them their own reasons. Yeah. But, you know, they haven't fucking changed their ver- as far as I know. I don't know. I'm more yeah. familiar with uh, with the uh, the Bible and yeah. the well, the, side of it. But I don't the, think they're they're manipulating the Quran all, I was and looking all the time at, like like yeah. the, they did with the Bible. Yeah, because I was looking at the origins, like where yeah. where the, where it came from, where because I've heard that there's the edited versions, and I've seen these uh, these uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the um, that documentary. There's a movie. There's a there's like two movies, and then there's a documentary called The Family. Right, the family is about um, C Street, right down in Washington, right, and it's about the young people that pretty much get together, and they become like this religious for for the Bible thing, trying to get more people just thinking like that, and they're supporting the politicians that are going out and trying to make that happen and gain things through religion in other countries, yeah. right. And that's, I think that's a main, that's a big um, thing that's happening in China because as they go down there, they might be trying to bring a religious thing down and they're like, dit, 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 dit. we're fine, we don't need that, what do you need? Do you need taxes? What are you talking about? Build more things? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? So it's like when they try to bring religion onto other people's countries, yeah. it's like, ooh, you know what I mean? And it's like, and it was from a book, it was a docuseries from a book that someone released that used to be involved with that, that wrote a book about it, like a holy shit book, you know what I mean? Like, and it was really interesting. I was like, oh, so they're trying to, you know what I mean? That's why like all these little things that he's saying, you know, right now, I'm the chosen one and you know what I mean? Like the Bible and, yeah. you know, it's like, that's scary. You know what I mean? Like, and just watching that and like, again, you know, even looking it up, there's a movie, there's like two other movies that are the, the family. Yeah. And you know what I mean? If, but if you watch this one and you see it, and just from the very beginning part, you're just like, Holy shit. Like, and they've been doing it for years and years and years. You know what I mean? It's like. Well, there's so many different ones, too. It's like, like, you know, people have been uh, piling wealth together in in massive, massive fucking sums forever. And then they just die off and leave it to their kids. And it keeps going. It just keeps snowballing down time. Exactly. And there's just these insane fortunes out there that people just keep inheriting and keep. Yeah, and they just fork it over to the next, to the next. To the next, uh, the Keep guys that going, are into yeah. Right. To the next, the next uh, caretakers. To the next caretakers, just like you know, it's insane. Can't it's do nothing crazy. with it, but they just caretakers. But it's you yeah. know, it's, it's, what are you supposed to do with yeah. tens or twenty, thirty billion dollars? Yeah, like, what uh, are you supposed to do with that? Yeah, you know, like, I mean, really, what can you do? Yeah, so it's uh, you just yeah. maybe help some people. Yeah, maybe help a lot maybe of people. people you know, um, like, but it's it's yeah. it's insane these fortunes that they grow, and it's like yeah. you'll never be able to spend it no matter yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, you got um, from the Aztec pyramids, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> the damn churches, you know what I mean? Like all the churches with all this gold. How did they get gold? I didn't see no, no uh, minor priests. You know what? Priests were minors, you know what I mean? Or they get all that gold at, you know? Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's how the, Go and the, take Inquis- it. the Inquisition, man, you know what I mean? When uh, they used the confession to, you know, tell the, the king, get paid off to tell the kings, you yeah. know, what the community was doing through confession. You know, and they get paid off. You know, where do you think they got all that gold at, you know? <laughs> I was actually doing uh, some fun little um, research or whatever you want to call it that I do, um, uh, reading a lot. And uh, um, what was the fucking point I was going to make? Oh, yeah. So um, so several people have come up with the same timeline for uh, for the Aztecs into the world calendar. Right. But then there was all these events that occurred, like the Spanish, the Dark Ages and all this shit right. that slowed down the the technological growth and the evolutionary th- growth right. that was happening, right? Uh, through those times, it was just like, wow, we're just going to... Sh- just take 500 years out, right? And it's like, maybe their math was right, but because of that insane thing that happened, our yeah. technology froze in time for several yeah. centuries and then and then started ramping again. 
and maybe yeah. there's that shit's still just like right around the corner. That's yeah, right around the corner. I mean, they're like, ah, yeah. you guys thought it was 2012? No, 2020, cabrones. Yeah. There's a crack in the fucking tablet. Hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> cabrones. You were like, man, 2020, 2021, not 12. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. There's a crack in the tablet. <laughs> That's yeah. Who knows? Maybe it is yeah, right. 2021. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's certainly feels like the end times with everything just getting totally fucked in the ass. Yeah, like or the end, end times of the thinking like this. You know, that was yeah. what I was getting at with the um, the Sumerian thing, where it was, you know, were we were we programmed originally before the flood because the flood and a lot of things happened mm -hmm. and you know everyone's mad at the devil for for warning humans for going against god well, 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 or, well i don't want to say god i would say gods you know what i mean let's leave it low, lower case right um they're mad at, the, at, at one angel for for going against the gods right oh yeah. he's the bad angel he's the devil he's lucifer and all this stuff. well he was warning the humans he wanted the humans to be saved leave them at least with the knowledge and at least be good with them and then the gods were like no we have to wipe them away like the gods didn't warn Noah, Lucifer did. You know what I mean? Or that angel did, or that mm. one. They say it was Enki, Enki and um, Enlin, which were brothers, right? Enki took care of the earth. Enlin took care of the sky above the earth, and their son. Then there were the fathers of 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 uh, um, of uh, Anu, yeah. right? So it just went down like that. So these were two brothers that ran earth, quote unquote, and the people that they produced, which were the humans, right? And when they said, when some of those gods were making babies and giants with the, with the humans, which is also in the Bible, which yeah. is in the Old Testament, right? Uh, they wanted to wipe them all away, right? With Nephilim and giants, you know, right? just really like two sentences about it. But it's like, wait a minute, where do those come from? Where did the giants come from in the Bible? You the know giant I mean? thing yeah, is yeah. like, it makes a lot of sense, you know too. I mean? So, I mean, so that's what happened in that part. And yeah. when... And and Enki was like, well, no, 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 no. Some of those humans are good. Just don't do that. And then they were like, and they had this big old war about it. And that was what that was about, right? Yeah. So he ended up um, warning Noah, which was like, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Eno uh, Ena, uh, the um, the Enochian uh, Enoch. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. he was he was like grandson. You know what I mean? It was like it was like this really interesting story of when the Bible was really being written or the story was being written there's like all these things that happened before you know the jeezy crazy thing that happened later you know what i mean it's like Jeezy all crazy. these things so um and again i say that because i don't want to you know pinpoint no, it. but, okay. but, okay. but it was a thing where the, where he actually warned the humans and he actually warned noah and said hey get everybody here's the how's you do this here's how you do that hey i was texting i'm gonna go to fly over there <laughs> This is how you do math, and this is how you make a pyramid, and this is how you do this, and this is the calendar, and if you don't, if you don't do anything right, it's gonna fucking end right here. And you know what I mean? Like you know, so they went to the Aztec, you know, went to, went to uh, you know Egypt, and it was okay. You guys gonna do this? You gonna help this? And you guys gonna make all this work? So to make it real quick, because you guys gonna fucking be killed with the fucking flood. And then you know what I mean? So 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 he helped them out. You know what I mean? But yeah. but in a lot of stories, he's the bad guy because he went against the gods. Well, he was actually, we wouldn't be here if the gods got their way because they either wiped us all away and no one would have warned us. Yeah. Who warned us? You know what I mean? Like, and that's the thing where it's like, oh, so are we programmed to be servants to even though that person was going to help us just because he went against authority, he's a bad guy. Oh, we don't want to be that. That's the simple way of putting it. Yeah. So are we programmed to be these servants of these people that were left as the bloodline from these gods that came down, right? Yeah. Be it the line of the kings and queens and Britain or whatever might, you know, where did, you know, where's that, you know, the light the Knights of Templar and all this line of people that came down. Okay. Well, maybe that's where that's from. So are we, can we like be aware of that and erase that or like re program ourselves to not think that we have to work for someone else all the time. Yeah. A lot of people are learning how to work for themselves learn how to do this learn learning how to do this podcast thing i would have never guessed that you had all this running through here man i'm Isn't really impressed you know what i mean like same with Thanks, me and like man. i said i do a forklift and i got involved with the cbd cbd uh, industry you know yeah. what i mean like i got involved with with a liposomal thing you know what i mean like this is li patented liposomal fat cell pretty much cbd in a fat cell yeah that will get through your digestive system a lot better than just all the regular stuff. Because many, many years ago, they found out that, hey, the stuff we eat 
and the stuff that's processed and all the stuff we put on our skin and all that stuff, we only digest and process 20% of it. Everything else gets down the drain. Yeah. So when you buy all that, that you know, high energy stuff or all that supplements or all that muscle stuff, it only goes to the toilet. You're buying very expensive urine. You're yeah. buying expensive stuff to run down the drain. Now, there's an old discovery they made that fat cells get through your stomach instead of getting processed through and kicked out. So they pretty much got the patent for it, you know, CBD one with a uh, sale and pretty much learned how to put CBD within a fat cell. So it gets through your three layers of skin and gets to those parts that hurt. And I was impressed with that. I was like, okay, there's all this CBD out there, all this stuff, all this, you know, CBF and CB x and whatever you want to do oh this is for this and this is for that and i'll give you the juice for that and i'll give you the cream for that no 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 no. it's all in here it's all liposomal so it's going to get through you know i have some people that have some some uh some uh people with testimonials on on the cbd1 las vegas since we're in vegas you know i did cbd1 and um and it works, man. It really, really works. And I'm, I'm really impressed with it. You know, it's brand new, about out about a year. You know, our company got the patent for it. So there's uh, the CBD1 cream and there's the CBD1 oil. You ingest the oil in the morning, put it on the hurdy parts and go about your day. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, like, it's amazing. It's amazing. We've had some people, even myself, you know, all the stuff that we've done, I bang my, ha- my, my elbows so many times on, on, um, on the carts and on, on, on stages and on instruments, you know what I mean? That it just started hurting, man. So I started putting the CBD one on and psh, forget it, man. Like after a while, dude, I was able to like not be cramped anymore. You know, I would sleep and I would wake up and I couldn't open my, my arms a couple of times. And I was like, what the yeah. heck? What was going on here? You know, I showed serious it. You know what I mean? Like I got involved with it. So and this yeah. is what you mean by liposomal, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you see, if you notice that the first part, of your skin, regular stuff, everything out there, Revlon, uh, L'Oreal, uh, Jergens, whatever, it only goes to your first part of your skin, okay? Liposomal stuff, because it's fat cells, your body is absorbing it and digesting it as fat cells, as organic fat cells, so it gets down all the way three, three levels down. It makes it a lot slimmer, and a lot, it's like trying to put, trying to fit a golf ball through a cheese grater trying to f- shove it through it's not going to work yeah. you're going to get a little bit out but you're not going to get all of it and your body has only so much time that it has till it digests and gets it out of there you know that you know what i mean like yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean like so once you have that going on you're set you know it's liposomal so it gets in through it gets in where you need it and it heals it heals more than you having to go over it over and over and over again because i've had so many people that are so like they discouraged and so like like unsatisfied with regular cbd stuff they know that it works and they hear all this stuff but they're like why doesn't it work well because maybe your stuff needs something a little more amplified which is the liposomal delivery system you know and again this was this was discovered in the 60s they were going to use it for cancer and they use it for some vitamin um, applications in the medical you can look it up liposomal delivery system and it's known but the patent went up and this company Viseo went and grabbed it and they've done another one before. They did Mona V. They did the when there's like Acacia uh, uh, drink that came out and all that stuff. And they did great with that. And now they're doing it with CBD. And yeah, there's there's one of our our um, our, uh, our testimonies. And he had arthritis. You know, and now he can now he can move himself. And I gave him a little sample of that stuff. And within 15 minutes. He was like, whoa, this is, he's like, hey, I was eating at the bar right there one of the last times, you know what I mean? And he was like, hey, I'm run, I'm run, this is, this is working, I think, man. I was all, is it? You know, like, just looked at him and he was like, ah, wow. And I just gave him a little sample, you know what I mean, because I had some on me, you know, just beautiful. Thank you, Daniel. this, you know, and we'll get it work, you know, and that's what I want to do, if anything, you know, if I'm going to put my time into anything, it's not going to be something that's not going to be beneficial for other people too yeah you know, and that's what i wanted to be. i wanted to be mutual benef- mutually beneficial you know what i mean i don't want to just try to take take stuff or have a business that just like a like a like a record labels the way they used to do like my, my publishing that i do like i make sure that the artist has 100 percent of the artist royalties you know what i mean our deal is hey you know you compensate me I'll just keep the publishing. 
you know what I mean? You compensate me with your song, and you keep the hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like you know, like those those uh, was that uh, the the whole universe, the the hot and sticky place, right? The yeah. the Big Bang Theory and oh, the yeah. Friends, yeah. right? The Friends, you know, what I mean? I'll be there for you, right? Mm-hmm. At them and Lowrider, those three, right? They're the top sitcoms, right? Right. So let's say every time they play, I'm pretty sure the number they make is a thousand dollars every time that song plays. Every time the song plays. That's fantastic. So if you have eight of those things, eight of those shows in within four hours, half hour stints, and you play that song four times, you just made, or eight times, because you have half hour stints in four hours, and that's the way they have the series, mm-hmm. you're making eight grand a day. Okay? Now, not a lot of people know that about the industry. Not a lot of people know that all those songs that you hear on the on the ads and all those songs that you hear on the, on the TV and everything, those are budgeted and paid for, and they have to be registered and published. Meaning, either with ASCAP or BMI, be a, be a, a member, you know, be an artist in there, and be published. You know what I mean? Make sure you publish. So I was able to get the the training and everything to become a publisher. So of course, with everybody that we know and on the avenues that I can, I'm literally people that are the head soundtrack people for a lot of companies have told me straight up, Avran, you know a lot of people. Just make sure their stuff's registered and they're ready to go, ready to be licensed and, and, and throw it to us. You know what I mean? We trust you. We know who you are. You know who we are. We've known each other forever. Throw it to us, man. You already know, because I go to them for advice and they're like, Avran, you already know what you're doing. Look at where you're at. Look at where you're at. And I'm over here doubting myself. And they're like, nah, man, just keep going the way you're going. Just, you know where you're going. And I'm like, hey, thanks, guys. You know what I mean? And these are people that, are, that I was able to work with, people that were just I network with. You know what I mean? Like my old VP, um, you know what I mean? Like from the American music when I was there. See, what happened was Death Row Records, uh, like I said, our, my neighbor was with... Um, we did the, 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 the Warren G thing. Then he ended up running Death Row Records when Suge was in jail. Then he ended up making uh, World War Three and American music. And he hired me, like, directly as, a, as an employee. At that same time before that, I was already running A&R stuff with him. I was... Me and some friends were walking through Death Row Records. Are you kidding me, dude? We would pull up in our old beat-up, you know, our old beat-up truck, our old beat-up bug, you know what I mean? On Wilshire right there at Death Row Records. And the security and the, on all the guys, you know, and everything. Was, you know, we walk in and they'll deliver, deliver some CDs, deliver some CDs because they knew who I was. You know, deliver some music, tell them what's going on. You know what I mean? They got, they introduced me to a lot of A and R people, a lot of the people that like introduced, um, you know, Dre to to um, to uh, Eminem, and they made the, uh, the, you know what I mean, aftermath and all that stuff. The people from Interscope, I used to work with them. You know what I mean? They were directly working at the label I worked with and they taught me so much. They taught me so much. You know, they had their own albums and they had their own stuff that was coming out. It was a lot of this is some some gangster rap, but I, I met a lot of the the metal heads because we had a metal label called World War Three. World War Three was was run by Jerry Battle and Juan Garcia. Juan Garcia was the vice president. Juan Garcia is now the guitar player for Body Count. You know what I mean? So he's the guitar player from Agent Steel, speed metal band back in the day, and now he's with Body Count. I was like, hell yeah. You know what I mean? These are people that I'm like, hey, what do I do? And they're like, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know what I mean? It's, it's good to know the caliber of people that are letting me know that, hey, you're going to be okay. You know, they're, and they'll advise me. They'll let me know, hey, you know, maybe you got to you gotta change a couple of things. You know? But, you know, a lot of times, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, you know, it's really, really cool. You know, just being able to say, hey, where am I at? What do I do? You know what I mean? And, and it's a network. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know everything. I don't know what, what to do all the time, you know, except I do know a better way than just throwing it out there and letting it happen because people can take your music and people can take your art if you don't have it with your name stamped on it yeah you know what i mean and once you have that then the 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 place can take it and you have to understand even if you are an artist and you're not published i'm making sure that you get a hundred percent of your of your royalties under our contract, under our agreement, and I have contracts. You know, there is NDAs and NCAs, but that's a whole other side. But um, you're going to get as much as humanly possible, because a lot of times, if you're not registered and you're not published, people will say, "Here's two hundred bucks. Thanks. Later." Yeah. Yeah, but like I said, they're making a thousand dollars every time that's what that song's played, and there's a there's a publishing percentage of it. So the band has to split a thousand dollars. But there's a publishing side that that one person or those couple of people only have, you know, are responsible for. And they're getting paid for that song and all the other songs that are on their library. 
So I got like, th- like you know, I got a bunch of people. You know, I got, of course, the Dead Birds and Blind Kids. I talked it over with, with, with Trent. You know what I mean? We talked about it. So all those songs are registered and ready to go. So if anybody needs them in a movie, like for reals, you know what I mean? Like I, I could, I could, I could uh, let them go, and 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 they're off. You know what I mean? They're they're going to be put in if if they get choose. You know, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot easier to do it like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just give it straight to them. You know what I mean? So just been building it. You know what I mean? Because there were a lot of things that when I started the business, that I said, oh wait a minute, I got to take a couple of steps back. Let me let me solidify my library. So I got like Dead Birds. I got some punk rocks. I got some. I got a couple of metalheads. Uh, a couple of metal bands from LA. I got a bunch of independent stuff that I have. You know that's that's going on. Because that was the one thing that when when I had met these people, they had let me know, hey, there's a show and they need music. Show us what you got. And I said, okie dokie. So I went in and made a song and I gave it to them. And then I didn't hear from them. You know, but I'd seen the guy, and, and I asked him what was up, and he's all, you know what? He's all, I want to let you know. He's all, we liked your song. He's all, and it was just a tune, you know, for 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 um for a show, and he's all, we liked your song. He's all, but it wasn't registered. He's all, the other people that that put it in. He's all, they already have it. It's already on ASCAP. They already have it. They're already registered, and they're already ready to go. So we needed it to be there already. When you didn't have it, and we already we already plugged them in. And I was like, okay, no problem. And then that's when they explained to me the whole like system of how it works. Now, the network doesn't pay you. BMG and, and, and ASCAP pay you. Because yeah. we let them know that, hey, we have this song in this, in this movie. And every time the song plays, we have the budget that we bought it that it's going to be $1,000 or $1,200 or $800 or $500 every time it plays. And because it's going to be in these movies and because it's going to play this much, we're going to pay them this much for it. Yeah. Right? So they get the percentage. So guess who? Guess what happens with that? Go straight down the slide to your pocket. Yeah. Because it's your song. It's already registered under your name. And it's, you, have a bud, you, have a, you have an account. Once you sign up with ASCAP or BMI, you have an account in there. You have your barcode number already. What I did, I have the business and I have all the qualifications and everything. So I was able to also uh, become an ASCAP publisher. So I, so I can do all the publishing side of it too. So I have all the rights of the publisher. And the publisher is really literally working for the band and he's the final one that can say yay or nay without having to call the band and ask everybody because they've already subsequently given the the publisher the right to exploit it in the best way possible that we could get this going. You know what I mean? So we talk to the right people. You keep with your band. We're both going to get paid. Don't worry. You're compensating me because I'm going to make this deal. They're compensating you because it's your song. Period. And that's the only way it's going to work. I can't. I can't promise you the money that I'm going to make because how am I going to be paid for getting someone a deal? Yeah. Wait for them to pay me? Have them give me a taco? Have them give me a burrito? I don't <laughs> think so. It's not the way the system works. Yeah. It's not the way. And the band doesn't give the network the, com- the, the song. The publisher has to give it. Yeah. It has to go through a, through a three because the contracts from the networks are to pay the publisher and the artist. So if it has no publisher then it's going to be harder for the artists to get what they're worth. They're going to say, okay, well, we're the network, and we're going to publish it as well, and you're going to get 10% later. Yeah. Yay, yay or nay, uh, it goes. Yeah. But if I've already published it, then they already see that, oh, it's already published, leave it as is. The band's going to get 100%, not the 10%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like that. And that's kind of how like the record labels kind of screwed over the artists back in the day, and that's why they're mad now, and they're kind of getting royalties now because... What'd you do, man? You know what I mean? You screwed the artists over. They're over your work and still living in the apartment. You know what I mean? Like, you know, thin as hell because they can't afford the food. But the but the manager and the and the record label is making all this money, though. Yeah. And it's and it's not funneling to the artist. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that in the history of music. I didn't like that in those things, you know. Yeah, Aerosmith so, got fucked really hard by it, the, their manager. Exactly. And that's the thing where mine is just cut cut to the chase i'm going to give you a hundred percent of the royalties and that's it's in the contract i had the people from nbc universal 
they let me use their their contracts. They're like, here, this is the template, and this is this is how we do it, and this is this and this is all. You know what I mean? Like, he's all, your name goes here, 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 your name goes here. So use it all you want. He's all, we we we're we're confident in you, and you can use our 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 the way we do our templates on the way that it's going, because that's the way it's going to happen when the song gets to us. So it's not, there's nothing different than any of what you're going to do. You're not, you're not like adding like another line and you're going to owe me this and you're going to, and they're going to let me take you to the islands and I'm, and I'm <laughs> going to get permission. You know, there's none of that battle going on. You know what I mean? There's none of that. Mm. It's all just like, I'm going to exploit your song to the networks. Yeah. If it gets picked up, you're going to get a hundred percent of the artists. I'm going to get the publishing and Let's see how many times it plays, and you're going to get paid. When we did the math for as many times as the Big Bang Theory was on, yeah, I think it's $178,000 a quarter. Yeah. A quarter. Just for writing That's that one song. every three months. You're going to make that for one song. Yeah. Like that's 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 awesome. The the problem is that not everybody knows the process of how to get there, and I was blessed with these people. They they turned around and let me know because we knew a couple of the same people. We networked, you know, and I was I was taking these courses and I was networking with these people, and I got to meet these people. And they were like, "Hey, yeah, you're there, but yeah, you need to just the clay a little and cut out the alcohol and stop being an irresponsible son of a bitch and then get it <laughs> straight and you'll be good. And I was like, all right, so it's taken a couple of years, you know, for me to get yeah. things in order for that or like with, with when, um, just to get uh, going in that direction, you know what I mean? Before, because, you know, I grew up fucking, you know, like after the accident, I couldn't be in, you know, when I was a kid, I cracked my head open. Yeah. I was in a coma for four days, you know what I mean? I was jump-started like five sometimes, you know, Jeez. you know, out of, out of control, you know, it was a horrible thing. But I wasn't able to play sports, I wasn't able to do that, so I had to really dial in with that, you know what I mean? And it's just like, oh, she's, what am I going to do? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a journey, man. It's been a journey, you know, so... So, yeah, that's how I find myself on the other end of consoles and stuff like that, man. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I was like, I love playing music and I love performing and everything, but it's like, I also would like to have a big comfy bed at home and yeah. you know, a nice comfortable house. That's just, yeah. you know, yeah. and eat good food. And now so. I think that without, I think that without the necessity of, of, um, big expensive thousand dollar cameras and sets and cables and power and 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 screens and all that you can mm. you can make something a lot simpler you know what i mean as far as films go as far oh, yeah. as music goes as far as all that stuff goes and if you're the one out there and you're the one that's doing it then you have a better chance of being part of those things that are on TV and on cable and on the new networks and all that stuff. Yeah. You just got to know the new, you just got to know the process of getting there. And if all of us know it, or at least the part that we're supposed to be doing or responsible for in the whole scheme and iceberg of things, you've seen that, that, that picture with the, the artist and the manager on top, but everybody else that's involved on the bottom. It's like yeah. all the people that are involved, you know, and if we get everybody together, you know what I mean? Like, and doing it in the right way, you could, we're not going to need to be going to work to put a show out. We're going to be putting a show out for yeah. ourselves, and we're going to be doing the stuff for ourselves instead of being so like, oh, I know I want to work over there, though. No, don't. That's just cool. Sure. Yeah, that's good. But right now, it might not be like that again. Yeah. <laughs> right now, it might not be like that again for a while. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? For a while, unless they come up with some vaccine that they literally let everybody have and it doesn't have a uh, microchip in it um, and it doesn't, you know, uh, uh, ex make people expire in 10 years, uh, we're, we're going to be good. You know what I mean? But as, as long as we just keep focus on what we know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep focus on what we know. You know what I mean? One of the best, one of the best um, advantages that we have doing these shows, as you know it, is that we are the only other person in the room sometime running the audio for them two or three mics whereas everybody else in the arena 
paid big money to be in that room. Oh yeah, you get uh, some amazing lessons on and some of them these shows. speakers, them people that big are talking time. about, them, yeah. them people that know their stuff. That's a really cool thing. And there's a lot of notes that I've taken in those things. And one of the main ones was, one of the the coolest ones was, um, it wasn't, you know, follow your dreams. And yeah. He's like, no. He's like, that's wrong. He's all, know your dreams, follow your skills. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's true. You got to know what you want, but pay attention to what you're good at. Because if you're shooting for that star and you're not able to do the process or not able to reach that qualification, if you may call it, yeah, you might want to you might want to figure out how to how you are going to make that qualification, how you are going to get there. You have to be learn to be resilient. You have to learn to you have a goal and you're going to get there, whether whatever way you got to do it. You know what I mean? I might not have a degree in college. I might not have, you know, um, the hit song, you know, and I still got to do what I did and I still got get to do what I do. You know what I mean? Blessed to be with this band, you know, blessed to be able, blessed to be able to play yeah. the music, be able to do that. You know what I mean? Just like I'm looking at, you know, some people ask me about lessons and stuff and I was like, okay, and I'm looking at, like beginner lessons, mm -hmm. I'm liking that, like, you know, step one, you know, I'm like, this is the guitar. <laughs> this is the body, you know, the neck, yeah. you know, remember, this is the neck. And it was like a thing of like, oh, yeah, there's a beginning point. Yeah. And to everything. Yeah. And it's like, I got to remember that because sometimes when we show people stuff, we already show them on level five. And it intimidates them, you know what I mean? And yeah. sometimes it's like, ah, oh, oh. so I've had to, I've had to step back and it helped me, it humbled me a lot to be learning this stuff, get, having the internet and doing this stuff, you know what I mean? Like just learning all this stuff because I just like, I'm just like, cool, you know what I mean? Like I'm able to like not be so critical on myself about stuff because there's a, there's a starting point, there's a process, there's a, you know, I can't always be there all the time you know as much as i want to as much as i wish i could have you know it's like it's all good it's all good fuck it yeah <laughs> no it's very true man you know and uh and life's not all about just doing the one the one little trick that you like to do either you know there's there's certain things that you are really good at that you don't know you're good at yeah and or maybe you're not you know, like i mean i have the the engineering fucking skill set mm -hmm. that i i didn't think i was going to be I didn't think that was going to be a major part of my life, you know, but yeah. uh, it's definitely a killer way to pay bills, man, and still yeah. be, like, part of, like, music or part of, like, live yeah. entertainment. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, it's uh, ultimately I like being on this side of the, of the cameras, right? I like yeah. being uh, the entertainer yeah, as opposed to yeah. the uh, that was one technician. Thing. That was one of the things with, um, the, when that... Uh, that my ex told me one time, she was like, you know, she's all, you need to play more shows and build less shows. Yeah. For you, for my health, you know, because all, you know, got all this equipment, got all this stuff, got all this knowledge, what the hell are we going to do with it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm just like, ah. Uh, You're only able to mean? play these shows for so many years too, man. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, so we played Sweet. Yeah, yeah, we played with Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. They were up there on chairs. They weren't standing up. Yeah. You know, they're on chairs. They ain't touring no more neither. They, nah. Fuck nah, me, I you think don't get to the see bass, play live. I think I just, I just heard that the bass player unfortunately passed away, you know what that's I mean? Too bad. So just like, yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's, it's the journey trip, we're you know? on, man. Huh? You know, that's the journey we're on right yeah. now, you know? Yeah, he's on it's the like, major tour now, you know? Yeah. We lost a couple of friends, you know? And that was one of the main things that got me to, um, to get things together, you know what I mean? Like It'll when, do it. When, when our friends started, started passing and I was like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? Yeah. Where am I going to go? What and they I were done? so young, too, yeah. some of them, man. You know, yeah. it's like fucking in their 40s. Yeah. It's like, it's they're like, they're not supposed to be dying yet, man. Nah, That's ridiculous. Yet. They'll scare not, the hell out of you. No, nah, nah, and that, that really, yeah. like, woke me up. Like, you know what? I can't I can't jeopardize my life like that. I, I, I want to do too much. There's too much I still want to do, and there's so much that I've already been through yeah. or gotten through or been able to overcome, and... And and that's that's it. I, I have to keep going as much as I can, you know, as much as I can. I can't give up. You know, there's certain things that I can't do. You know what I mean? Like I said, after that accident, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't play football or any contact sports and I couldn't be in the military or anything because I lost. Uh, I had a ruptured ear already and I was before I was 18. Yeah. So because of that, they were like, we can't 
because you're you already had an operation and you're just and that's the ear that's closest to the that was like and it was just not and then and not that it would have been good for me or whatever but at the time it was really there were a lot of discouraging things that were a, a result of that yeah and i couldn't do nothing about it and i had to learn and to deal with it and then heal from that you know so and, and i'm glad that i was able to to do the stage thing because the entertainment is what I wanted to do anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like, I guess that's what I'm going to do. You know what yeah. I mean? I guess there's no choice now. You know what I mean? So, so, you know, learning the guitar was a, was a really good thing, a really good outlet of a lot of the, the technical frustrations that you, that you, that I would have gone through without learning all that stuff. Yeah. That would have been like, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, but learning the guitar was a, a good healing, healing exercise, you know, all that stuff. I'm still learning. Like I said, now that I have the, um, the internet and, and stuff like that, Fire Stick, I'm like, shit, man, looking at all this stuff and all these, like, like different styles and just different techniques, you know. I even have a friend that wanted to say, he asked me, he's all like, so, hey, do you know how to play that thing on Crossroads? <laughs> I was like, fuck, that's a good challenge right there, you know what I mean? So, like, that's probably going to take me, like, a month to learn that, you know. But, but still, dude, I'm already learning. Those are the best ones. Though. I'm already learning the, the first parts of it, you know what I mean, just those. And the cool thing is that, the, that, that not a lot of people know, but that, that's not Ralph Mach Macchio playing that. That's actually Steve Vai playing that. When he's when you actually see the hands playing it, oh, really? real, that's actually Steve Vai playing it. And the audio for that is Steve Vai too. All the guitar on that is all Steve Vai, all of it. And um, for those parts, you know, there's a couple of parts that he mimics where you see Ralph Macchio with the guitar and he's doing things. And if you're a guitar player, you know that that's not what he's playing. That that's not it, you know. It's all good, and and that's cool. I'm sure Ralph Macchio plays the guitar, and I'm sure he's, if he does, you know, by now he's pretty good. I hope, you know. The thing is that that's Steve Vai. Yeah. It's like no, 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 no. That's not something that you just like. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. <laughs> you know, that's not like that. You know what I mean? It's like uh, no, no, no. Yeah. And that's where I, where we were just talking about, where there's that beginning point, where there's that starting point, where I'm looking at it, and even just the beginning part, just like. You know what I mean? And then he yeah. does that first arpeggio. That's a, an A minor arpeggio. And it's the funny thing is that that's just the same three notes. It's one note at a time, it's, man. It, yeah. And it's one, you can two, only three, play one, two, one three. note it's, at it's, a time. He's just doing this, this octave of the same, you know, the three minor notes. Yeah. And, then, and then he runs back up. You know, it's really cool. But it was an arpeggio. It was in an arpeggio um, format. So it was just like. Really, really cool. So I'm just like, all right, I see what I have to learn now. Yeah. And I see the parts now, and I see him saying, like, that, and, I, and I'm glad that I learned the scales like that, you know, like, that was a main thing. And a lot of people told me when I was growing up learning guitar, a lot of the older guys, because I would see this band, and they were like, no, nah, you got to learn your scales, you know, you want to you wanna do the leads. Because there's one band that used to be at the, out, out, the, out in the, the backyards over there, they were badass. And there's this cat, Art, and... And Greg and and Freddie, or Fernie, I forget what it is. I always I always miss his last name. But these were like some rocker dudes that were older than me, that were a good ten years older than me. But they were playing the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Jane's Addiction, uh, Van Halen, and to the T. I mean, they were playing badass, and they were playing like that's where I first heard of um, Ides of March and Wrathchild. Okay, because I had never heard that version of. I didn't know that Iron Maiden had another singer. Yeah. And I was like, what? Because I only knew them from, you know. With Bruce Dickinson. It was Bruce Dickinson, you know, the main three. And when I had finally got them, it was at Somewhere in Time. Mm -hmm. So that's the tape that I got. I got Somewhere in Time tape the same day I got, I think it was The King of Rock by Run DMC. Ah, you know what I mean? At the record store. You know what I mean? That's a good trip. To, <laughs> man, I, I miss going to the record store Remember like that, bro. Store, man? Yeah, 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 dude. Or like yeah. going to buy, for me it was CDs, you know, but now we go yeah. back and we buy fucking vinyls, yeah. right? But, uh, dude, yeah, fuck. Or um, remember those goddamn CD collections that you'd, 99 cents or whatever as long as you join their CD of the month club and you just fucking cancel it yeah. and you'd get like 10 CDs for like a buck yeah. or like a nickel or yeah. whatever it was but it was just the pamphlet it wasn't the book yeah right? it, was, it was just the one page one, one print you didn't get the whole the single book. print oh, yeah, the single, oh they did, did do that didn't yeah, they you didn't, you didn't get, get the, the whole lyrics, booklet you didn't get the booklet you just oh, got the oh shit I, yeah. forgo I forgot yeah. about that I'd have yeah. to fucking go dig out with some of my original yeah. stuff I bought from them and see if that's the case <laughs> that's funny yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I still have some stuff. It's funny because I was just cleaning up during this quarantine, you know what I mean? And I cleaned up a lot. 
I was able to get um, a lot of stuff in order, a lot of my, my units, you know what I mean, a lot better now. And um, I was going through some old magazines I had, and I'm like, shit, dude, I got Mean Street from L.A. with Tool, like, on, you know what I mean, when their first albums were coming out. Like, I got it, like, from, like, 94 and 93, like, all these, like, L.A. Weeklies, like, with these articles of, like, and I was like, that's why I saved them. I was like, ha, ha, ha. So I'm, like, looking at I got, like, a stack of them in my room. I'm like, shit, dude, you know, where these come from? You know, old No Doubt, like, when they just came out. I remember when when I was um, out of, right out of high school, I did, I was security real quick, you know, much like how I got into uh, House of Blues, you know. I was security for a few months, and I got into to, uh, production. Yeah. But um, they, uh, I was security for Staff Pro, right? So they were pretty much the ushers, like out here, how they have the, the red coats, right? So we would be the ushers for, like, the Palladium and for the Greek and for the, you know, the Universal Amphitheater and all this shit. So I was at all these gigs, and it was awesome, man. This one time, it was No Doubt. It was Fear, No Doubt, and the Toy Dolls. And this is right before the I'm Just a Girl hit. Okay. Right before. And it was like they opened for Fear. And Fear was one of my favorite bands. You know, Fear More Beer, you know what I mean? Like, you know, Leaving and all that stuff, you know. And, and even that, Leaving and Fear, my buddies are actually the backline for that from another band, a punk band in, in, in East L.A. that I knew. So when I first heard Fear... One of my favorite movies when I was a kid growing up was uh, Streets of Fire. And in that movie, it's like with Rick Moranis and William Dafoe. I think it's one of William Dafoe's first out, first films. But Lee Ving was his sidekick in the biker, in the biker gang that they were in, in the movie. And that, that soundtrack was um, done by Jimmy Iovine from Interscope before Interscope happened. So this is like... It has a vibration. It's like, wow, that's Jimmy Iovine. That's Rick Moranis, um, you know, William Dafoe, uh, Bill Paxton is in it. You know what I mean? So it's like... Streets of Fire. That one there, yep, yep. I can dream about oh, you. <laughs> you know what I mean? That song was in there, dude. You know what I mean? So it was like See back then, but it was really cool because, again, Lee Ving was his, oh. his sidekick. You know what I mean? It was just really, really neat. You know what I mean? Cool. It's a trip, you know, so. But seeing that stuff, you know, seeing all those movies when I was a kid, all the music, you know, it was really important, you know. Yeah, the music makes a movie. Yeah. I mean, look at a fucking Tarantino movie, right? Like, that whole thing's a soundtrack. It's, yeah. It's, it's so fucking juicy, the whole Definitely. fucking, every time a fucking song kicks in, man, it's a Definitely. fantastic song Definitely. that you're just like, ah. Yeah. That's how I discovered Al Green from Pulp Fiction. I was like, who the fuck is singing this what song? Is this? What is yeah. this? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and now I'm, I yeah. love Al Green. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. I Snatch, that's a good that's oh, a good Snatch soundtrack. Snatch is a good one, that's yeah. That's a great soundtrack. You know, I used to listen to that. When I was doing the repairs, when I was helping Chris at um, House of Blues, I was helping him do the IT repairs and stuff because they needed to make all this cable, right? So I was learning how to solder. I was learning how to cramp. I was learning all that stuff, so I learned how to do all that. But they... They used to have a bunch of old CDs in there. So one day I turned in, I threw that one on, and it just had all these like cool jams. Like I was oh, like, yeah. "What the hell?" You know what I mean? Like um, that's Guy Ritchie. He does the same shit. He's got yeah. he's got killer tunes in his soundtracks. Yeah. Man, I remember um, what was it? The payback in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Right? Yeah. That shit uh, that changed that song for me entirely. Yeah. When everybody's coming together to fucking yeah. kill each other, and they don't know that everybody's coming together to kill each other. Yeah. Yeah, that shit was fucked. Yeah. Yeah. That. that, that yeah. Nuts. Let me see if that video's on here. Yeah. 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 You got a video? What video are you looking up? I can probably look it up on here too. That one, no, that one time that I. What did I tell you that I opened? I, that I that I uh, auditioned for Medalachi. For Medalachi? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, it just so happens that uh, they broke up or something. Something had happened. I think they're they're um, the singer and the, and the the guitaron and and the trumpet guy. Uh, they split off. I think they're like the original guys or something like that. I forget what happened. 
but uh, some some uh, mutual friend of mine that I knew actually through Static X crew and all that stuff. She hooked. She she called me. She's like, "Hey, uh, how like much are you into Green Jello? Like, how much in are you?" I'm like. Well, whenever I can go and play, I play. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Do you know, know how this works? <laughs> I don't know. You know how this works, right? Like, and uh, but so she's told me that this band had, you know, that I would go good with this band. That like, just my character or just my my, you know, it's, it's who I was. The vibe she got from me. I was all cool. So it turns out that Melachi needed a new guitaron. You know, the bass player. Oh, you know what tight. I mean? So I play bass and all this stuff. And yeah. And I know the songs that they play, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like uh, uh, Ace of Spades, you know what I mean? And all that stuff, you know what I mean? So um, I got in touch with this guy, and he sent me, their manager, and he sent me um, some songs to learn. And I was all, okay. And it was Ace of Spades, Welcome to the Jungle, um... Rainbow in the Dark, oh, shit. and um, I forget another one, uh, like a, I think it was an Iron Maiden song, but um, anyway, they needed those all songs. On that bass too, Iron all, Maiden. All on, yeah, yeah, on Iron, on 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 bass, on guitaron. Oh. Not on bass. Were you doing guitaron. triplets the whole time? So I had like to know. So I had to get a guitaron. I had to find a guitaron and learn the songs on the guitaron, the big thunka thunka thunka, yeah. right? Right? So <laughs> in a week. In a week? In a week. Oh, shit. And videotape it and send it to him. Jeez. So I, I don't know how the hell I pulled it out of my ass, but I... Get on it. Within two days, I found a guitaron. And I looked up guitarons like from like how much they cost, what I'd have to do to get one, and I didn't know if they were uh, uh, a product band that they had they had the instruments or whatever. So I didn't know what I was stepping into, right? So I ended up, you know, hooking up with this mariachi in um, over there uh, off of like Vegas Boulevard, like North Vegas Boulevard, like almost to like Mohawk. Like down over there, like past like the the Vegas, uh, what do you call it? Um, like Craig, like I've, I've, uh, but anyway, I, I went over there to this place, and he ended up selling me this this guitar on you know four hundred bucks, you know, like fuck it, you know, yeah. and it's just fucking authentic. It's not like I I looked at Guitar Center and they had like a Squire one, you know, yeah. and I'm like okay, like. I don't want a squire like como chingas you know what I mean like what can I get like a real thing you know so I looked at some real ones and shit man they're like a thousand bucks you know like like some really really good high quality ones and I'm like shit I don't want to get this little like this little rinky dink that's gonna break on me you know what I mean like I don't want you know what I mean so I ended up getting a guitar from this guy and it was broken in and it was ready to go, man. It is a real thing. It is a real thing, man. This is like imported, like you wouldn't believe, you know? And I'm just like, shit, yeah. So I went and got, got that, learned the songs, and I sent them to him, and they loved me. They were like, holy shit, how long have you been playing? I go, like a week. I'm like, what do you mean? And yeah, that thing right there. And, um, you get to so, wear a fucking fancy hat like so that, that too. Was, that was heavy. I didn't know what I was gonna wear, but um, but they had oh, like that. All that man. It was just like, where is it at? Do I have any? Do I even have? Do you even have pictures? Video editor. No, I don't. Jeez. I don't know. I probably put it on my other my other thingy thing. I'm wearing the memory stick, but yeah. yeah. But I had the op the thing, and I was just like listening to them, and I was playing them, and I was getting it because I knew the songs already. You know what I mean? The yeah. answers, na, 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 na. You know what I mean? Like, like I was just this. You know what I mean? I already know that song because that's that's the cow god. That's Green Jello cow god. That's you know one two three four. You know what I mean? We live in a country without no meat. Obey. You know what I mean? Like, so that's. <laughs> That's the cow guys. I'm like, perfect. I can play that. So I just, I just, I just, uh, bless you. I um, just transferred it Thank to you. the guitar on, you know what I mean? I just learned it and stuff. And it was cool. So they ended up giving me a audition in L.A. So I went over there to L.A. and I auditioned for them and I played all the songs. And, 
And uh, they ended up uh, choosing somebody else. So they had all kinds of people auditioning for it. And I'm sure, you know what I mean, that there are a lot of other people that are local that are like a lot better than me. You know what I mean? I just started and I'm down to do it. You know what I mean? It's a paying gig. You know what I mean? Like, totally. like so I was like, shit, you know, why not? You know what I mean? If I'm going to be doing this, might as well do it and be for real about it. And I was, I was getting ready to do that. And, and. I, I didn't hear from them and whatever, and I didn't get the gig, and they got someone else, which is fine. Because imagine if I would have quit all my jobs right now and not get my unemployment. Yeah. Imagine if I would have quit and been like, sorry, there's no gigs, bye. Dude, my friend did that. You know what I mean? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm in a way blessed that I didn't get that gig. Yeah. And I'm okay with Green Jello, and I'm okay doing that that Jam Kazam thing. You know, I can't wait to do that. Yeah. That should be good. You know what I mean? You guys I should mean. look at it, too. You know, you got all this equipment here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just, you know, I mean? like, still have it open, on. man. Yeah, yeah. See what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, it's fun times. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. How much did it cost to uh, set up an account? It's free. It's free? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there's another part that oh, you yeah, can I guess buy. It says play free. Yeah, there's another part that you can buy that comes with jam tracks, like 4,000 tracks that you can play to. God. Yeah, you don't... Yeah, you, we, already, we already know all those songs. The whole point <laughs> is to, like, yeah, play with, yeah, other, with people other people here. Or yeah, or I don't least, want any jam least, tracks. Or at least jam your track with, yeah. you know what I mean, like, your leads or your, your beats or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, that's a lot easier, you know what I mean? Like, at least for right now, at least to to satisfy what we got going on to at least, you know, we're going to have to get through this, you know? So, yeah. you know, it's all good. You know what I mean? Like I, I appreciate everybody fighting for it and I appreciate everybody standing up for your rights. Absolutely. But, and right now we have to respect each other and like, I don't have the right to get anyone sick. You no. don't have the right to get me sick, especially if it's a deadly <laughs> virus. You know what I mean? Come on now. Come on now. I'm glad that you guys had the test when you came in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I have yet to be tested, tested, but still, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I'm willing to go with it. And the thing is, I haven't been out. The last time we worked was March 9th. You know what I mean? Yeah, So, nice. So I've literally been home. You know what I mean? Like getting shit together. You know what I mean? Like I'm really actually happy to be out right now. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> you know, so that's awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here. Oh yeah, man. yeah man. Thank yeah, you for having me, man. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, actually, that's a great that's a great point to uh, to wrap it up at. I think, man. Yeah. We're already at a fucking hour fifty here, man. Oh, shit. And the table goes by so fast, right? Yeah, yeah. It's we're super just talking, fun. man. Like it's the old days, you know. Yeah, dude, I miss you, man. It's yeah, been way too, too really, fucking you know, long, man. Fuck way yeah. too fucking long. Thank you. But yeah, so uh, hey, man, how about we uh, do this thing right here, right? I'd like to thank. My guest, Avron Laguna I from Green Jello. <laughs> Green Jelly, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Don't sue anybody. Yeah, not right now, right now. Yeah, so this has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. We're going to just, uh, I guess, fade to black. Peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching my podcast. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here. We are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.